Hello, everyone, and welcome to State of the Realm, your weekly Final Fantasy XIV podcast. This week, it's week two of our Friday schedule, where, well, we just waited till Friday because we knew we'd have something to talk about. This week, it's going to be the preliminary patch notes for patch 4.3. Without further ado, we're expecting a potentially longer show, so let's get started. I'm one of your hosts, Michael, Mr. Happy Poveromo. Of course, joining me is Sly, a.k.a. Sly the Fox, a.k.a. Sly, a.k.a. Gray Fox, a.k.a. you, my boy Blue. How you doing? For some reason, I forgot one of your nicknames randomly. I just, I almost lost one there after all these years. My week's been busy, so busy that I forgot to ask anyone else if they wanted to be on the show this week to talk about the patch notes a little bit more. Although, to be fair, we'll talk about this in a second. We basically have already done the show. Oh, they can't? I forgot to swap it over then. That's my bad. And that's just, that's still the audio issues I haven't fixed. We can do a retake if people want, but I'm down to just keep it as as is. Muted. Yeah. 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 I remember. See, I'm that still, wasn't even I, me. I'm still new to this whole, my audio channels don't just pick up both. It doesn't pick up both audio channels anymore. It's whatever OBS right. update or headset update I did however many weeks ago, where OBS just doesn't pick up both my game and my chat at the same time anymore. Right. I could try to press it to default, but that didn't work the last time. So we're just going to leave that as is. So Sly, how you doing? <laughs> I've been doing good. Had a great week. Had, had an awesome week. How, how's your week been going? My week's been going yeah. good up until about 30 seconds ago where I was pretty embarrassed. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's okay. <clears throat> yeah. But I, like I was saying before, I was so busy this week that I uh, forgot to ask anyone else. They want to be on the show. But as the point I was making before we found out you were muted, um, we uh we won't really uh, won't really feel like we miss much. I feel like yeah, we've yeah. literally talked about everything that's already on these patch notes already. That, that's why you when you said it was going to be maybe a long show. I'm like, wait a minute, we talked about half of the shit. You know like, what? We I always yeah. say because there's always the chance. Sometimes we just have longer discussions. You know that normal stuff. Meh, meh, meh. 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 Well, before we get started talking about the patch notes, we'll do. I want to do a little reminder to everybody, something I said at the end of last week's show that I'd like to reiterate this time at the beginning of this week's show. Um, for those who may not have uh, seen the end of the show last week, uh, Steel Series is officially sponsoring State of the Realm as well. They've been a sponsor of my channel individually for uh, two years now, as a matter of fact. So uh, they now want to basically do a monthly giveaway for State of the Realm, and they've treated me real well. I've been enjoying their products for the past couple of years, so... On the YouTube side of things, you guys are going to get to enter as well. On the Twitch side of things, you're going to have to go to YouTube in order to find the hyperlink to enter. There is a gleam.io in the description of all the YouTube videos from now on. Uh, depending on the month, that'll be it. That'll be an entry into the current month's giveaway. So currently we have the May giveaway that's under last week's episode. It'll be under this episode as well. And then at the end of the month, uh, we'll pull a winner for that and then start the next one. And then once a month, we'll be, pull be pulling winners. So thank you to Steel Series for free giveaways for our State of the Realm viewers. Thank you. Thank you, Steel Series. And they didn't make me do this spiel. I just had to do a giveaway, but I figured doing it at the top of the show makes a lot more sense than doing it at the end of the show. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sly, we have the patch notes. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And uh, we knew all this. <laughs> Almost all of it. So, why are we having a show? I don't know. And I guess. I guess we don't. I guess we could just. We're done. All right. Uh all right yeah thanks everyone um damn we're not even gonna get through the the patrons or anything but thank you guys so much for coming out to stay of the round this week uh we will be back next friday of course to talk about uh the patch itself and see what you know what we like what we didn't like um so i don't know if they can see me out the side of my own camera because i'm not hiding i'm just like standing next to the green screen i'm just gonna walk back into view right now yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, there are some things in here that we didn't know or things that were further elaborated on slide. We still got to do a show this week. Yeah, of course. Got to uh, go through the rigmarole. Yeah, of course. Of course. So uh, if anyone would like to follow along, we're basically going to start at the top of the patch notes, move all the way on through um, Sly. If he's picked anything, I don't know if you've picked anything in particular you absolutely want to hit on. Um, thank you for linking it over in the chat as well. Sly. No problem. And uh, yeah, we're just going to. That's it. That's what we do for every patch note show. That's what we're doing for uh, for this one. So, top of the show is new main scenario quests. I hope you like question marks because that's all it is. 
<clears throat> it, it's Gosetsu and Suyu is the name of the first class, and then it's all question marks. That's it. They are they are giving us nothing. Not a thing. Not a damn thing. Which is nice because it means we can skip that for this portion of the show because we've speculated on the story enough at this point. Um, although there's a part later in the patch notes that will make us come back to the main story quest themselves. We have our Four Lords quest, which yep. will not be a trial, but it apparently will be the dungeon. I don't know if you caught that, but the uh, Swallow's Compass is actually part of the Four Lords story. I kind of had a feeling that was going to be the case. Really? Yeah, sort of. Um, because when what wasn't the last uh, Four Lords, uh, when, when we started <clears throat> the Four Lords, we had to go through... Um, Hell's Lid. God, I forget. Yeah, Hell's Lit. Yeah, so... Don't worry, yeah, I don't do experts yeah. very often either, Sly, so... Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> only I remember... to do them again. Yay! Do you, though? Do you really? Think about yeah. it. Do you really yeah. have a reason to do your experts? I don't think you do. Yeah. You have a reason to do Swallow's Compass once. <laughs> and that's that it's gating the rest of the Four Lords story, most likely. So you're saying after you do Swallow's Compass once, you're not going back at all? Just I so just, just kind of... Taking the sights. What do I need to go back? I mean, you're, for? you're gonna you're gonna do dailies and shit, but so. So I, I on my main, I haven't done an expert roulette in legitimately like like three months. I, it's like it's been since Eureka came out. My main character has not touched the expert roulette. I do them on my alt because I don't want to do two Eureka run throughs a week. Uh -huh. But otherwise, no. Okay, that tells that. So you're you're doing it Swallows Compass once, and then maybe. Uh, another time on your alt and that's it so two times you will do swallow's compass two times yes i will okay that is it and that's that's i don't need anything else man i'm glad there's so many options that i don't have to run the four man dungeons a ton of times i don't know if y you weren't around for right at a rumble rumbleborn's launch but i mean it was mm -hmm. literally just run ak and wanderer's palace over and that was it that was the only way to get tombstones back then there was nothing else I don't thank want God that options. Life. Yeah, thank, thank God. God for options. That's that's all yeah. I'm saying. I'm just grateful that there's more than one option. That's all I'm saying. Makes okay. sense. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm also for Four Lords story wise though. Uh, this patch for me, I, I don't think I've been this excited about the story of a patch outside of an expansion launch mm -hmm. in quite some time. Between the main story and the Four Lords and what they've been saying about Return to Evilise, I uh, I fully anticipate this being a, a high a high priority story i'm not skipping cutscenes when i stream this time i normally do oh definitely but i'm not skipping a single one uh do you put one over the other though because partially i'm putting i'm putting the four lords over the main story right now even though both are equally as good i'm i'm a little bit more hyped for the four lords so what i'm actually i'm throwing 24 men at the top of the list for me um, okay. That is going to be the first thing I do come Tuesday morning will be the story for the 24 man. I'm going to run the 24 man with Elysium, get murdered repeatedly because I, <clears throat> excuse me, I already know they're going to try to kill me over and over again. Oh, so it's that type. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, kind of I'm not too. oblivious to it. There's uh, Listen, yeah. if there could be seven healers and they could all have rescue, they all would. If they could all be in my party, I mean. So uh, I also have to grab the Namazu quest before the daily reset. Big reminder for anyone mm -hmm. who doesn't know about that. Always grab your Beast Tribe dailies the second the servers go up so you don't miss the daily reset because you get two sets of dailies in the first day. So 24 man is going to take priority. I think I'll go right to the, the main story after that just because I want to get to the extreme. Mm -hmm. And then four lords, I'll have to get the dungeon done. That'll probably be my, my third priority will be getting four lords done personally that's fair yeah um so moving on to the next thing it's you know return to ivalice they just a few quests here um i don't see any mention of the crafting or gathering quests i don't know if it's just not shown because um oh you know what i think i see it so the final quest in the return to ivalice list right here all of them say disciple of war magic 70 70 70 70 the last one says level one one exactly so i mean first of all that could just be a typo it's really weird to only have level one at all being a requirement for something that otherwise you can't even get to um i don't know but if it doesn't even say the disciple of anything so i think that was intentional 
It might be, yeah. Um, I, I guess I would have to look at the other language patch notes um, to know mm-hmm. that for certain. But that might be the optional crafting and gathering side quest that they had mentioned in the previous live letters. Um, speaking of which, uh, do you feel good that you're going to have a lot to do with your crafters your crafters this patch slide? Because you leveled them before I did, so you planning on using them at all? Getting a little bit of mileage out of them this patch? Maybe, but it's like like you were talking about earlier um, a few minutes ago with experts. It's kind of like, well, I mean, they're all 70 now, so what the fuck am I really going to do? Unless they offer something new. You can craft um, with them. <laughs> You yeah, make your I, own potions, I, at least, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's the, like, other than, you know, crafting my own shit, or, like, there's no new shit, and, and I'm not going to use the level or anything. Yeah. Here. Yeah, I mean, I actually, I don't know if this one will be used for leveling, because I still think, like, we're going to be rebuilding, like, or helping build the, the, uh, the well, the Prima Vista, the, not the Dome and Enclave, I mean, this quest for Return to Ivalice. I feel like this oh, is going to be helping the 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 play like the the props for the plays for prima v- for the prima vista mm-hmm. or something like that. So uh, I also just kind of want to know that kind of story. No, yeah. So according to our chat, the German translation says class or job at level one. So the other ones say the same thing. Yeah. The other the other patch notes. It's definitely not a uh, not a typo of any kind. Um, then we have new side story quests. Now, this one, I think I know what it is. It's another question mark, question mark, question mark. You have to complete what looks to be the 4.3 main story. And it even says after progressing through the 4.3 story. But we don't know what this actually is. I think this is the tour of Stormbloods. So you know how they did the, the tour and in, in 3.3 for Heaven's Word? Mm-hmm. I think this is a tour for 4.3, just like that one was. Oh, you're, are you talking about our victi- victory lap? The victory lap, uh, we yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you have it's any other premature. thoughts about that. Well, wasn't I, it in 3.3 for Heaven's Word? It was, but it, like, the victory tour did serve a purpose. Like, it, we we were basically, I, weren't we doing stuff for Estinian at that point? Like, we were going around. Well, Estinian had bailed at that point. Mm-hmm. He had He had gotten up from his bed and disappeared at the end of 3.3. Right. So, uh, I mean, it involved him, the, that that victory lap. I, I guess I, I kind of get what you mean. Like, when we fit 3.3 was the end of, of was a thousand year war. This is right. like, oh shit, Xenos is alive. I guess, whatever. Yeah, there's still, there's still a lot going on right now for, for, so I guess victory rap, lap wouldn't be the correct term. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I a guess Doman should, victory you, lap. So we're is done with though? Doma. Like this is supposed to be like leaning towards the end of of Doma's integration. Do you okay? Even with all the stuff that's going on with Asahi, do you really think after we finish the story in four point three, this will be worth having a quote unquote victory lap? Because I still think I think it's too premature. I I guess it depends because I think the one character who kind of deserves a victory lap above the rest of them is Yugiri because she's been around since uh, 2.2 when we uh, encountered Leviathan. Um, So she's a character who we've seen every just we've she we've been around her the most. And then when Kasetsu came over, you know, our linking aspect was her. And then she was our linking aspect to pretty much all of Doma and the East and, you know, Mm. things like Suyano Sato and all that stuff. So I feel like she, she's the one kind of factor we have that kind of is victory lap worthy because she's been through all this crazy stuff and has had no time pretty much to be normal. So her victory lap, I could at least see for something like that. Her point. Because we don't, I mean, we don't know what's happening to any of the characters. We don't know if who's, who's dying, who's living. We don't know anything yet. So we got to wait yeah. to see who lives and who doesn't. Um, we have the Domain Enclave quests right here. That's mm-hmm. nothing too fancy. Just go and grab it over in the Domain Enclave itself. Um, it says you must first complete the quest of Thousand One Farewells. I'm pretty sure that's a quest that's currently in the game that you need mm-hmm. to complete. So make sure you have that done. Custom deliveries. You need two Princess of Suino Sato and None Forgotten, None Forsaken. And then she has a secondary quest called Up, where they trade all day in the sun, which requires you to finish the previous quest. Those are just custom delivery stuff. I didn't even do Monago's custom delivery. Me either. I like Zloe's story. I just, I, I didn't, I wasn't leveling my crafters yet. (laughs) 
That's the bottom line. I just wasn't touching my crafters yet, so I just I just didn't didn't touch Monago and her quests in, in any way. But next is my favorite thing, the Namazu. Number one right here. Yeah. Yeah, you're looking you're really looking forward to the Namazu. Why are you looking forward to the Namazu so much? Well, they they hyped it up a little bit in the, some interviews recently that the Namazu was a much higher budget for the quest line than for um than for the previous Beast Tribe quests. So mm-hmm. uh I'm curious to see why. Um the, the main thing that they're doing is they're trying to bring back a festival. So I'm curious what what I guess is required of us for that and it will how will it look and whatnot. It's got their own etherite, which is nice. I don't yeah. I don't think we've ever had a beast tribe get their own etherite. I mean the closest thing is Mog Home, but that's not even close Zenith is closer to the Moogle Beast Tribe than Mog Home is. Mm-hmm. And Mog Home is not really a beast tribe area as much as it was this is where the Moogles are from kind of thing. The code, oh yeah, the codens had one built in prior. I guess what I mean is no new beast tribe has been added that didn't already have one because the Kojin had one, the Vanu had one. This time they're building one. I don't know. I feel like I'm I'm just giddy, and the mount. Yeah, I mean I'm semi excited for the mount. I like everybody's hyped for the mount. I'm like, yeah. Then everyone's gonna have it, and no one's gonna want to use it. <laughs> Exactly. Either that or they're gonna get tired of the sound of from it. Yeah. Didn't, I, didn't didn't Yoshi P say something about like having several of these mounts at, at the same time? It sounds something I forget what he said, but I said he th- well, I'd it. imagine it looks somewhat like a festival, <laughs> which I guess is the aim of the Namazu altogether, so yeah. M- makes it makes sense there. Um on top of that, uh what else are they doing here? Um so there's a bunch of side quests that you have to complete. I noticed that there's a lot of side quests that need to be complete across these in, this entire patch. I have to do them because I haven't touched the side quests. So finally bite me in the ass apparently. I haven't done any crimson they walked in Kurobana uh, versus Gyorin. I didn't do the ones for Kur and I. I haven't done a lot of these side quests and I know I haven't. So I got to go do them. Have, have you done yeah. them? Yeah, I think I'm in the same boat. I, think <laughs> I saw the Nama. I think I saw the Namazu once, I, and then after that, um, I kind of, you know, moved on with main story. And that was like at the beginning of Stormblood. Holy shit! Yeah, because yeah. I I know that the some of these I think these two sets of side quests are specifically in Yanja and not in the Azim mm-hmm. Step, despite the fact that Namazu Beast Tribe areas in the Azim Step. Um, and I know that. Because of at the beginning of Stormblood, obviously there was a lot of instances where you couldn't continue because of you know the servers or Raubon or whatever. And it was only in those times I did side quests. By the time I got to Yan Ja, I had gotten enough ahead of that problem, I suppose, that at that point I had given up doing side quests altogether because I was over leveled already from doing the side quests when I was stuck. So I, I I know by the time I got to Yan Ja, I pretty much did zero side quests. So I have all of these to do. Looking forward to that. Well, we got a full day to do it, so yay. I'm doing them tomorrow. Yeah, I'm doing them tomorrow. That's for me that it's either tomorrow or Sunday. Because obviously Monday I can't do it. So one of the two days has to be dedicated to actually uh to actually doing these. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll Tuesday. I'll be fine. No, I no way. I have to with the Namazu especially, I have to beat that daily reset and I gotta get over to the twenty four man. I ain't messing around with that. I mean that shit done ASAP. Other than that, it just explains how the Namazu work. We have a better idea how the Domen Enclave works now, though. Yes, we do. You just vendor items. And it grows. That's it. That's, That's it. it. That's it. You have a weekly limit on how much you can sell. They'll pay you slightly more than normal vendors. And the more you sell, or the bigger Doma is, the more they'll pay. And uh, just do that every week, and you will help rebuild Doma. When I first saw this... I was a little bit worried before I saw that there's there was a, a weekly limit because it's worrying me about how much you know the market could be abused and it's not even a market at this point it's just the enclave so uh I'll, it would be interesting to see um Ash's take on this and like if it really is worth it if it's not I still think the market trumps the Domain enclave even though Domain enclave for story and progression and whatnot. 
Dude, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Eureka. I'm going to take all the bullshit that I get, and it's getting vendored there instead of in the main city. That's what I'm doing. Hmm. I don't care how much they pay me. I got 140 mil. What the fuck do I get? What? They're going to pay me scraps. Their shit, they, their whole nation doesn't exist yet. They still got to rebuild it. I'm not worried about what That's they what... pay me. <laughs> I got cabinets for days. <laughs> Dude, I'll even throw them some shit that you're not even supposed to like. You're not even supposed to vendor. Like, if I gotta wind up fast, I'll throw it their way. I don't care. I don't need that guy. What does the Domen Enclave need with a wind up fat? Yeah, I'm sure there's some children who could who would love a pet. There's fireworks. They can celebrate shit. No, no. Give those to a stage reborn, please. If you're on that server, I'm not on that server though. So the Domen Enclave is getting it. Oh, okay. Clear demi materia. They're getting. That's all they're getting. I'll sell them whatever I don't need from Eureka. That's what the Domen Enclave is getting. That's it. That's all we need. So yeah, just sell stuff. Um, any of the last hundred donated items can be reclaimed, and but uh, make sure if you need to reclaim it that you do it immediately. So don't sell the wrong things. You're gonna very much regret it. Um, updating loot for the treasure maps. <laughs> More squadron dungeons. <laughs> Oh, uh, more squadron dungeons, right? Because this is a thing. So yeah, in addition to the dungeons we already have, getting just so small, so small. There's two other ones there, Sly. Why don't you read what the other two are? Do I have to? You can. Orm Vale and Brayflock's long stop hard. You want to know something really funny about Orm Vale? Is it sad I'm actually less afraid of Orm Vale with the, with the NPCs than I am with real players? I'm, I'm very much feeling like Orm Vale will I'll be like, you know what? Easy. And here's why. Those NPCs are tanky as all hell. So normally you'd think in the first room you'd have to be afraid of them with dealing with the poison. Stepping in stupid? Stepping in stupid, yeah. No, not worried about it. They're beefy as all hell. Not worried even remotely. Um, first boss, them doing the flowers, they won't have to do it. They won't have to eat the fruits. I don't have to worry about having the party member who just goes, oh, so that's what they were for. The second boss, they probably won't take lethal damage from a 100 ton swing, like every pug does and dies. And the last boss... I guess the only downside to the last boss is uh, bad breath. Unless you're yeah. a tank. I'd say that's probably the worst part. And even then, they're still beefy as all hell. So I don't even care, really. First of all, I don't know why I'm saying this. I don't, I'm not going to do it. So I don't know why I'm even planning this out. <laughs> yeah, the AI don't have to worry about webs. They don't like they're the NPCs are just able to bypass all the bullshit. So like, I'm not worried about any of this. You're a little bit more optimistic. I, I mean, still think, I, I still think, like, again, these are NPCs. I understand, like, they bypass a lot of bullshit, but still, there's a lot of stupid that you can't bypass by just being an NPC. Sorry. And this this dungeon is a glaring, it, it's it's a glaring weakness for anybody who just, it, it who just stupids all, all over the place. But the funny thing is, NPCs are naturally stupid, right? So because right. because Square Enix knows they are dumb, they give them these buffers that make them immune to shit. So even though they're stupid all over the place, they've got a they've got a bubble that they're they're just in this own NPC bubble that just doesn't follow all the rules. Anybody who does this, like the week. That, that Friday show, let us know how it goes. Let, let us, us know, know why you're stupid. still doing it, too. Yeah, that, too. But let us know how stupid it was. Listen, I I think these three dungeons will be fine with NPCs. I think there's some very glaring drawbacks. I think the NPCs are so strong, it won't matter. Like, when I think of some all, I think of Teoman and dropping meteors. They're not even going to get meteors targeting them, probably. It's only going to be on the one player. He's going to have one meteor the whole time. Hmm. 
It's gonna be. That's it. It's just. It's like dealing with stupid, but if stupid was immune to stupid. I don't know how to describe that. I tr I trust them more. It's just, it's weird. And don't forget, you can glam them this patch with the glamour dresser, so they put one of those in the barracks. Yay. That's how I feel. Yay. I don't know. Like, there's this huge obsession with dressing up NPCs this patch, and I'm not, I'm just, it's not, doesn't interest it's me. Just, it's just the glamour obsession in general. Like, it's nothing with NPCs. I mean, uh, it's like, I've, well, it is the, true the past game. That is true. Yeah. Over the past few weeks, months, you I can't escape the number of photos, actual you know, really good photos I've seen on Twitter and Reddit and everything. Glamour, it's you never escape it. It's a big deal, man. Glam glam is endgame. So then everyone true. wants to customize everything. That's it. Um, there's new, there's new type of house. They made some changes to subaquatic voyages. You can now hire a calamity salvager or a journeyman salvager for your house, but it doesn't do everything the calamity salvager does. And they decided not to tell us which things it does. Are you, well, no, I don't have a house. I'm... So here's the thing. Not only do I not have a house, I don't go to the houses that I am like a tenant or a member of like the FC Mel's house, she has a house. I go there occasionally to like hit the training dummy she put out front for me, and that's it. And even that, honestly, don't tell her, but it's in a really like inconvenient place. Don't tell her I said that though. I want to live. That's it. I can't move it. I don't have permission to move it. Don't snitch. <laughs> Yeah, my guys, you know, snitches get you, ditches. Put you in a ditch. You know that you can go to like another dummy somewhere else. And... But when I go to dummies in other places, there's other people there, and I'm trying not to to talk to other people. I used to go to summer. I used to go to Summerford Farm all the time, but then there were like people there and shit. You hear that? Happy's anti antisocial. I'm doing. I'm trying to work on my own DPS. I don't need other people fucking get in my way all right i don't need their animation shit i don't need them hitting my dummy and shit i'm just trying i'm just trying to focus on me right now so hmm. i'm just saying um there's also get namazu equivalents of the current npcs the junk monger the supplier the mender that stuff new furnishings the guest book which is got a lot of space here in in the patch so <laughs> They were really hyped about this guest book. I mean, you can. He, he, I never thought I'd be playing an MMO to the point where, um, you get a daily allocation of likes. They give you ten when you first like get when you first go to a message book. You get ten likes that you can distribute, and you get five mm -hmm. likes per day up to a maximum of fifty likes. I'm gonna, I'm not I'm gonna be the one to say this. I kind of want that to exist on all social media, because I'm sick of seeing. Pe I want people to have a limited number of retweets per day. Because fuck the garbage that gets retweeted onto my fucking Twitter profile half the time. Some people are really good at retweeting important things. Some people are really good at retweeting stupid things. I just don't want Fold to be able to do it. That's where I was going. I felt like this was directed at somebody in particular. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you I that. just don't want full to be able to retweet as much. Okay, it's just, I just, it, something has to stop him. So if Square Enix can set the trend, then we can continue it. Okay. I'm just saying. Glad that's you, you glad that's out of your system now. Yeah, I'm just. You good? Yeah, Thanos. Anyway, um, okay. there you go. <laughs> Smug Thanos. Anyway. Uh, newer caching rolls do stuff, you know, just adding stuff to current menus for the message book. You can put a, you can put more than one aquarium in uh, in your house now, but be careful. They issued a warning to people that there's currently a bug about a uh, bug with the aquariums where uh, mm -hmm. you can kind of clip them through 
furnitures and stuff to like i guess put two of them in near in or near the same spot if you do that and they fix that glitch they're gonna it's just gonna delete everything it has a chance of just deleting everything that is like the aquarium and is near the aquarium so read the warning and don't do it but if, if we're gonna see people have full-on like actual aquariums in their houses because you can have up to 10 in a mansion after they fix that glitch 10 aquariums i just want to see the reddit post of the day that you know the people who actually were stupid enough to try you know hey my aquarium's gone and half my furniture's gone well you know you were an idiot you (laughs) yeah i mean if you just want to if you want to lose all the items involved in the clipping process then yeah go right Mm -hmm. ahead and do it just but we already know, dude, as soon as we log in the patch, we're going to be in Kugane or something. And the first shout's going to be like, so what's new? <laughs> All these patch notes, first question going to be, so what's new? It happens every patch. Yep. Yep. Where do I go for it? Just link the patch notes right there. And you're trying you not go. to be a smart ass when you link the patch notes, but you figure you could probably save them a, a lot of future headaches if you just give them the location of all the patch. And then they get really upset with you because they, they're like, why didn't you just answer my question? I didn't ask what the patch notes were. I asked, where do I go for this? And you're just like... Because you stupid motherfucker, it's all in the patch notes! <laughs> That's my answer. I'll be smart with you. I don't give a fucking damn. I, shit. <laughs> Read the goddamn patch notes! Nailed it. As the chat said, <laughs> nailed it. There you go. Uh, that's an audio clip. I like that one. Um, Jesus. More flowers for flower pots. The, and it, you can listen to city-state background music in residential areas instead of residential music. Uh, music in residential areas. Chocobo races can be queued in through the duty finder. We knew that already. But additionally, they're going to add a no-reward queue where you can just queue in with friends like a party member just to just to race each other and it'll actually mm-hmm. uh, sink you down to the lowest rated lowest rated chocobo and you could just race with friends that's nice it is happy how long has it how long has it been since you've actually done a chocobo race uh, uh probably about five months i was doing i uh, know you know what i take that back 11 months because it was the last make it rain event which is coming up in like june or july okay. so like 10 11 months uh hmm. I, th- I still think it's fun. I think it's, you know, uh, it kind of like Blitzball will be one day. It was kind of like people wanted it because they didn't remember that it was actually really shitty in Final Fantasy VII. And that it's somehow it's still not great here because of the way that changing lanes works. It's not bad. It's not terrible, but it's no Mario Kart. <laughs> Why were you even expecting that? Well, there's power-ups and shit, all right? I think, like, the first time it came out, I had, I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. You know what was the most fun? Getting eight players and all eight of them getting briars right next to each other. <laughs> and everyone's just like, no, no, don't, don't. I won't. If you don't, I won't. Please, please, no. I don't. No, no, no. The briars, the the, mm-hmm. the full party briars were, uh, were a hell of a time. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. man. Uh, on top of that, they changed a few of the ways that, you know, what different rankings for the Chocobo mean when, you, when you're queuing into normal races. They put NPCs in the tournaments, and the NPCs apparently get harder the more victories you have. Uh, I'm assuming that means in the tournament itself. By the way, if anyone's dropping frames, we are we did have a minor hiccup and are having minor hiccups, so don't worry too much about that. Uh, yeah, and you, there's only 15 matches, and now there's like eight different queues for Lords of Verminion. There's Player battle, non RP. What? <laughs> non ranked, I guess. Because isn't there a Lords of Romanian like ranking system or something? I don't know. I They're... forgot this actually existed. Yeah, there's player battles, non RP. There's player battles, RP. There's tournaments. There's master battles, master battle hard, master battle extreme, master tournament. I don't like saying master battle that many times in a row because there's just too close to other words. But anyway. Maybe it means player battle RP. Non- I don't know. Where's the player battle ERP? That's that's the only thing that's missing here. I assume it means like ranking. 
or something. Chat says it's this, it's ranking. This still is a thing. Yeah, I don't know why. Maybe people will do it now. Show hands in chat. Anybody seriously does Lords of Reminion? Or planning on it for the next patch. You know. For this. For, for this. All this. For because of these quality changes. You will do it? Ah, Look at that. There's one. Oh, two. Oh, wow. Wow. Three. Me, oh, oh. me once. <laughs> yeah, ERP is just extra rank points. Don't worry. People do it oh. during Make It Rain. I mean, there's new challenge logs involved in it for MGP. There's still some Chivos. You know. Those those will be the ones I don't get. All right. Well, you know. That, that just shows that you're not dedicated to Final Fantasy. Oh. Oh. Uh, they have the performance changes, new instruments, updates to old sounds. Um, you can use them in the Ivory Chapel now. So uh, if you hire a band for your in-game wedding, make sure they're not shit. Please. Please. You can even do it in your barracks. You can practice the... We can play for your NPCs. See if they start dancing. That would be nice. That would be a nice touch if they actually started dancing. It'd be funny if you like started to play like something from Legend of Zelda and instead they just said, hey, don't do that. 14 music only. You're gonna get, you're gonna get us sued. But I'm in here in private. No, Yoshi P's listening through your NPCs. He knows. Were they just yeah. emote like bad things at you? There's emote like faces at you. Yeah. They do the fucking bullshit where you repeat it too fast kind of thing too. Um, new challenge. Speaking of which, um, yeah. No, speaking of which, the the keyboards. Emotes, emotes. Oh yeah, there's there's a great emote that's gonna be there a little bit later. Oh uh, man. Oh, they're adding a bunch of challenge logs for Eureka, as well as two for Lords of Reminion. So it's basically like for beating different aspects of enemies or certain types like Ashkins or Elementals, you just get. A percentage of an elemental level per one completed. I'm assuming it's like probably like 5% for the first one and then for the tier 2 one it's like another 10%. So like two of those together is like 15%. So let's see. If that was the case, it'd be 15, 30, 45. Yeah, it's like three-fourths a level. Not including anything else you do in there. It could be more. It could be like 10 and 10 and 20% or 10 and 15%. But you can use this to catch up before Pagos. Sly, I don't think you and I need this. No? I mean, I'm still behind, but I'm almost done. You'll be, you'll be done a lot faster now. And these don't yeah. say onimos specific zones either. So it looks like this will roll over into Pagos for elemental EXP. So going from 20 to 30 the first week of Pagos. Have a nice little boost right at the beginning. Yeah, it's going to be weird. I didn't get to experience Onimos when it was fresh. So I'm curious what will change about Pagos, because for the first few days, while people probably still have the idea that they're going to NM train, they still need to figure out where everything is for the first few days. So I'm curious what right. what now that now having seen Onimos and knowing that Pagos will at least be similar enough, um, what will the, I guess, introduction to Pagos actually feel like to players? Roughly the same, honestly, I think. Just a lot of what the fuck am I doing? This EXP is shit. <laughs> Comments? Yeah, for the first for the first three days, and then after that a tracker will come out and then everybody will be all happy and shit. So just give it give it a few days. It's not gonna be that bad. The hive mind will queue in and be like, uh train where's the train? And they'll be like Where's the train? What train, dude? We don't know where the fuck anything is. <laughs> Uh, in an interview that came out yesterday, they also said that Pagos is... They said two things. One, it's going to have some Final Fantasy XI features, which could just mean the armor and stuff, that the glamour, which I think is all it means. They also said there's going to be more verticality to it. Um, there's going to be areas you can only reach by jumping from a higher area to a lower area and things like that to give people a little bit more of an exploration sense in Pagos. So I hope you like jump we puzzles, Sly. Yeah, I knew you were about to go there. Do we really need verticality in, in a place like this? I think they want to... I think the big thing is they want people to feel like exploring Eureka can be another thing you choose to do, because that's not the only thing. They're also adding what are called Happy Bunnies from Final Fantasy XII, 
Um, and those bunnies will basically, uh, there's hidden treasure around Eureka that you can dig up. And so if you're near one, the happy bunnies will let you know, and then you can go search for those instead. And we'd like to assume that those have rewards for Pagos in there, maybe crystals, maybe glamour, stuff like that. So uh, there, it seems like with the verticality, I'd imagine they'd be hiding the treasure chests in those areas that require verticality to reach. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, that's, that's what I imagine people, there's going to be an option there. It reminds me of getting to um, where was it, Sea of Clouds for the first time and having to deal with the verticality and having to deal with the fact that there's places I can't go. I, like the verticality, like gives you a false sense of accomplishment. Like in the beginning, you, you feel like you can get there, but you can't. You, you have to wait until I don't know how many levels just to get there. And it was it was it was nice to see, but annoying to deal with. So I'm not looking forward to it. Well, at least there you eventually were able to unlock flying. Here, that's not going to be an option. Here, you, of right. course, in Pagos, you'll once again be mountless for the first however many levels. And then after yeah. you get to the later parts of Pagos, probably like level elemental level 28 or so, because the maximum is going to be 30, uh, then you'll probably get the quest to actually get the mount again. They are saying that they're going to make some changes to the next Eureka zones a little bit more so than the previous ones. The Magia board is going to be undergoing some change in the next zone of Eureka. They already know all the locations we're going to go to, the order of them, how it's going to end, all that stuff. But also, there's not going to be any armor upgrades for Eureka in uh, Pagos. It's only going to be the weapon. Okay. I, I, not, what, do you, not... what do you think is the main reason? I think they actually elaborated on the reason in a, in a comment that I saw on Reddit. Somebody had like taken it from an interview or something earlier today. What would what's your interpretation of it? That it's just strictly a weapon and not armor. Yeah. Eventually, I think armor will get revisited. I think so too. I don't know, but I don't know why they're taking a break from. It, like it would make sense it, again. It makes sense to go ahead and you know have some continuity with what you do in your quote unquote relic armor, but um, I can't even really see the reason why they would you know put a stop to it dispatch or for this section of um eureka and then you know revisit it at a later time which i still think is going to happen i'm not mad at it. like i'm okay I'm, I'm okay with the armor like you're probably going to get better armor anyway between the patches so why is it a big deal i see i don't think it's that big a deal i think that they probably want to not either a invalidate the 24 man loot or b invalidate the raid loot depending on the item level that it goes up to but for me the big thing is we're approaching the next item level increase anyway as it is mm -hmm. and so i don't like it's by the time we get to 4.36 we're anywhere from like six plus weeks out from the initial patch we could it could be like eight or ten we don't know how when 4.36 will fall we don't know if it falls on six weeks eight weeks we have no idea but we're almost at the halfway point before we get to the next patch at that point. And it, I almost feel like, who cares? Because it, it, it just doesn't... Like, I guess try, just making sure people don't find no reason to do the raid. Mm -hmm. But the, most of the people who would have I no think... reason to do the raid probably don't have a reason at that point anyway, unless they haven't beaten it yet, at which point they probably want to beat it before they get in, in which case right. this helps them. So... I think even implemented... People would still do the raid regardless. I don't think it would be a, a non-issue for people to do both. Go go for their relic and still do the raid. Now, will will there be fall off after the first week or a couple of weeks? Sure, always happens. It, there's going to be fall off even you know without there being a relic and you know that being the only option between four men. So yeah, like I don't, I honestly don't think it would have made a difference. I don't. I don't think it would have either. I think. I think the main concern is is that it would have for some people, mm -hmm. and that they'd, they'd rather just not. I think it'll get revisited in four point four or some point after. I. I personally think it's probably kind of difficult to upgrade armor like visually every single patch. Also, like a full fifteen sets of armor every single patch. Other than just adding a glow, like that's it's still a lot of work to do that. So I think it's a mix of not wanting to invalidate stuff and it literally being a monumental task to get that much visual work done in the three in the however many months between eureka patches right. um all the same though i think that means that the weapon will probably take longer this time because think of it how 
it was just basically all Onimos, you know, and uh, Onimos crystals and Protean crystals for the last one. And if it's the same exact speed as last time, now you'll go through Pagos even faster if it's not more, if there's not more things that you need for the Pagos, for the Pagos upgrade itself. Yeah, I agree. I think they kind of draw it out um, since there's nothing else left but the weapon itself. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what the plan is for reward structure-wise. Who knows? Maybe you need the Happy Bunny items to upgrade it. Maybe that's part of the change to the to the Relic stat. Yeah, they're going to throw, throw something complex in at the end, kind of like what they did at the end of the weapon, um, where it was, what, the Zuzu Feathers? Yeah, well, not, that's not complex. It was just different from everything else we needed before. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd imagine you'll need items from, the, from Snoo Snoo, whatever the hell that thing ends up getting called. And I have to imagine there's something else there, but we'll see. Because generally, Relic Steps have been the same idea, but with slightly different executions in the past. So, I, there has to, if it's only weapons, I feel like there has to be some sort of change. I feel, at the very least. Um, they have new emotes. They have new hairstyles. That's all stuff. And then we get to job adjustments. Can, can we bring that um, weekly meme up again, please? I don't want to get, I, I don't want to get copyright strikes. <laughs> Damn it! Because it's 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 not our content. It, a, it's not our content, and B, it's not even the content of the people who made it. Because they're using, because <laughs> they're using Dragon Ball to abridge it, to then have us abridge their abridge with Wolf's visuals over. It's 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 a lot of it's a lot of stuff. I don't know that I want to deal with on the a YouTube lot of abridgement. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we just go to my Twitter. Go to Sly's Twitter. He probably retweeted it too, I imagine. One of us. Yeah. And if you see a picture of Vegeta with the samurai symbol on his forehead, that's the one you want to click. So it explains everything. Oh, it explains more things than... We had this discussion before the show. So, you know, Vegeta's basically a samurai. I'm the best. I don't... I only need me. Selfish samurais versus Goku, who's a monk who's all about brotherhood and friendship and shit. And he's the protagonist. So, makes perfect sense. In all reality. Yeah. Although yeah. Goku has nothing to do with the meme. I just feel like it kind of works out that way. You know, whatever. Um, so let's go down the list. Dark Knight. First one. So you and I are not experts in Dark Knight. No. Let's let's proceed no. that. Um, so from someone who has no idea what we're talking about, what was your first thought when you saw these? Welcome to the why don't we have a Dark Knight in our comp patch? No, see, I don't. Th I've seen people go. I've seen people on both extremes. I've seen people who both are Dark Knights and aren't Dark Knights go to both extremes. That what you just did, and the okay, what the fuck? This is nothing, or this is nice but still not great kind of boat. Um, so one by one, Power Slash got Dark Dark Arts potency added. Dark Arts adds 140 potency, so they it goes from 300 to 440 potency. Use Power Slash like once a fight. On average, if you're playing Dark Knight, so that one time you're going to get a good bit of extra enmity and damage, unless you are forced to use Power Slash again for whatever reason. So that's one thing. Grit MP costs have been reduced. That just means if you need to go into Grit, again, most Dark Knights I know almost never turn it on. It's a little bit more right. accessible. Dark Passenger got changed to 60 seconds. You can only do it once a minute now, but it has Dark Arts potency and its base potency got buffed as well. It also gives you increased enmity, which is never a terrible thing, but it's also not like, I guess no one's really riding on the enmity of Dark Passenger. It's probably pretty good in dungeons at the very least for AoE packs, but um, at least you'll, you'll probably be with this, you'll probably be using it once a minute because it lines up a trick attack now too, once every 60. Yeah. Granted, it lined up a trick attack before too. You just had to do it every 30. So there's that. Dark Mind no longer has a Dark Arts. It's just 30% magic potency. I like that, but I still think Dark Mind needs to not just be magic anymore. Personally. Why? Because when Pal Paladin was supposed to be the physical tank, Dark Knight was supposed to be the magical tank, clearly that didn't work for Paladin in Heaven's Word, so they let them block magic, and now nothing's really special about Dark Knight. That is the only thing special about them pretty much, is I press Dark Arts a lot, and I have a cooldown that's magic damage only. Granted, it's a lot of mitigation for magic damage, and it's a pretty mm -hmm. slow cooldown. But, I don't know. I feel like this whole specific resistances, specific things, has caused so many issues in the past that 
it's gonna I feel like it's one of those things that gets retired eventually. Question is when? I don't know. It's hard to judge because you have uh, the chat points out. Raw intuition is the same thing. It can only parry physical attacks. But for some reason, no one gives a shit that that can only parry physical attacks because the rest of Warriors fucking stupid OP. So, whereas Dark Mind is like, everyone's like, man, we don't have a lot of cooldowns if we don't spam TBN. I wish I had an extra one that worked on anything. It sucks if you run into a boss that doesn't do magic damage. All of a sudden, this Dark Mind button is all alone. It's just all alone there. Granted, that's very uncommon nowadays. Um, dark side effect no longer ends when you die. So it just means you don't have to turn it back on, which is nice. Shadow wall got moved down to two minutes. That's a big two one. Two minutes. That's a big yeah. one. People have been asking for that for since Heaven's Word, I'm pretty sure. So that's a big one. Dark arts got added to plunge. More enmity. Skill animation is shorter. We talked about that the other week. And then it's just mm -hmm. deal dark arts your plunges now. You just there's more dark arts. People said there was too much dark arts, so here's more dark arts to add on top of your dark arts. But at least it's DPS. There you go. It's a DPS. You want DPS? That's DPS. My I think the Soul Survivor change is the big one. Now, even if you don't kill the enemy with it, you still get 20% of your HP and MP back when it wears off. That's nice. Hmm. That's real nice. So what, like, it's cool in what, two minutes? I think it's two. I don't know, because I don't play. I, I almost wish it said what the cooldown was just on. I just wish it had the full tooltip or some shit on the patch notes or something. So basically, we're talking about maybe a two minute. What? It is two minutes. So OK, it is two what, minutes. Two, so, yeah, two minute clemency. Uh, I mean. I w yeah, I guess if you want to look at it that way, I just <laughs> I mean, if you want to put it simply, yeah. If I just always look at anything that gives Dark Knights more MP is really nice. And it also just means Soul Survivor is not the button you press only when you're killing ads, pretty much. Because that's what it is right now. You pretty much will only use it when you kill ads. So on fights without ads, it just kind of sits on the bar. It's not useful at the mm -hmm. end of killing a boss, you know? So uh, it now has use regardless of what kind of fight you're in, which usability-wise, I think is, is a good thing. Personally. That's it. That's Dark Knight changes. <laughs> Monk. So let's move on to Samurai. No, actually, <laughs> no. Okay. So to be fair, I didn't. Monk doesn't need any buffs. Let's just be clear about that. Monk's Monk's fine. Though. <laughs> if they're gonna change things about Monk at this point, they'd be systematic changes, not not DPS change. So the, we guessed last week that purification would be the thing getting the enmity reduction. We were right. Right. Okay, fine. All if right. you need it, it's there. I, to be fair, the only time I ever need purification is if I'm AoEing, which means my threat is probably not crazy high anyway, or I just died, in which case I, my enmity was already reset and I didn't need it. So, it's whatever, it's there. Reduces enmity by half. Okay. The second change, on the other hand, is way nicer. It's really only quality of life if you have two monks in the party, though. Um, basically what the, this change does is it separates the personal brotherhood buff from the meditative brotherhood buff. Um, mm -hmm. so m regular brotherhood is the 5% damage buff. Meditative brotherhood is the buff that redirects critical hits for physical weapon skills as stacks to the, to the monk. So meditative brotherhood can stack, meaning if you have two monks in the party and they both brotherhood, the they can both get the critical stacks, pretty much. Which is really the big thing that it gets annoying us, is deciding if you have two monks, whether or not you want to stack them, whether or not you want to stagger them. Because one of the monks basically gets fucked, because none of their cooldowns line up. So that's it. It's just quality of life, you get two monks. I know, Sly, there's no Dragoon changes, so it's hard to get excited. But I think after these Samurai yeah, changes... keep saying... That motherfuckers keep saying that like I asked for the shit. Like I I'm No, I'm happy. just saying I'm just saying if it was it was you'd be so hype if we were talking about Dragoon buffs right now. For a month Probably you're not. like, oh cool, wow, that's so interesting. My job's been fine for a while. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's basically all I have to say. My job's been good for a while. I'd good for I'm you. okay. Yeah. Good, good for you. Your job's been okay for a while, but they still add shit. Month dude, monthly monk buffs been going on since Heaven's Word. It's been great. It's been great. 
it took even if throughout a whole awesome. expansion of monthly monk buffs, it didn't matter until expansion. <laughs> and even then, we still needed monthly buffs. But dude, mm. after these samurai changes, I think everyone's gonna go samurai. <sighs> And then, never, and then delete their I've characters. never seen I've never seen a mo more underwhelming set of changes. This is the most man shit I've ever seen for a job. Like, oh, we're gonna like when when they were when they were talking about this in the live letter, they made it sound like Samurai was gonna get some drastic changes. And then you see this shit. They said they would buff their DPS. That's what they said. That's what they did. No, 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 no. I mean, yes, they did say that, but I guess the the tone, either the tone or the expectations by the community, something was amiss because, like, again, this shit's meh. So let's just let's just rat it off in, in just a couple words. Twenty potency to five okay. their weapon skills. Five percent more damage reduction on third eye. And merciful eyes, which I think is the personal heal, reduces enmity by twenty percent when you use it. At least Gecko and Kasha have 420 potency. Lays it. Yeah. Eh. It's uh it's it's like a one to two percent DPS increase approximately. Well, okay, let's be clear. Let's say you were at seven thousand DPS. Which a top tier mm -hmm. samurai on like 06 Savage would feasibly do. With, you know, party buffs and all that stuff. That would mean an extra 140 DPS. If it was 2%. So, it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you look at it like that, it seems like a little bit more. The problem is most Samurais I know don't do 7,000 DPS. <laughs> I, I, most of the Samurais I encounter don't... They just really need to know what time it is. They don't... That's... That's... And it's, it's time for Yokai. So... Uh... It doesn't help that much um, when you look at it in regards to most most samurais. Uh, it, it, I don't think this helps. There's no good way to spin it. This shit is just man. I think just give up on like. Here's the thing. I don't care if samurai is like five six hundred DPS above monk. Like at it's at its top tier play as a monk. I wouldn't care. That's the identity of the job. Would it probably be difficult to balance? Yeah. And honestly, people would still probably prefer raid utilities like Trick Attack and Brotherhood and shit like that. But at least it'd be in the right spot. This is, to me, not enough of a push. I feel like they can just, they can go a little further. Maybe another 20, maybe another 30 potency on all these skills. I'm okay with that idea. And good samurais, they'll love this because they'll notice it and they'll they'll use it and it'll look great. If you're a black mage, if you're a samurai, if you're any job that mostly just brings DPS, then great. A good one is still bringing the pain. Bring more pain, samurai. Just bring more pain. Remember at the beginning, at the very beginning, before we even got samurai, before Stormblood even hit... I told y'all I wasn't drinking Kool-Aid for this exact reason. They that's all they had, and it's eventually it's eventually going to be their downfall. No, it's gonna eventually the be we... their rework in 5.0. <laughs> eventually, but yeah, like where the fuck are we now? Like, why would anybody? I mean, for for you know, for shits engaged just the level of job, sure. Why would anybody go out of their way to play this right now? They enjoy it. Do you? <laughs> they enjoy playing it. They don't enjoy the memes they go through while they're playing it. Wait, seriously, do you? When you've, well, you've listened, when you've landed that fat Madari, that fat Madari, that direct crit, trick attack, enhanced balance, fucking brotherhood. It feels good. Everything. It feels good. That, with the potion up, with all the buffs up, when you hit that fat that Madare, it feels good. It does. What does everything else feel like? All I'm going to say is 5.0 <laughs> is what's going to happen. <laughs> All I'm saying. Oh, oh, God. 
Sure fucking hurts, doesn't it? All I'm saying. Damn. Is when 5.0 comes around, what's going to happen is Samurai's finally going to get raid utility. Everyone's going to say it was only a matter of time, and they're going to get... Uh, I, I think my chat called it earlier. They're going to get Weeb Hood, where all this is going to be the name it's going to be called the skill is going to be called weeb hood right and it's going to give a physical damage buff to the whole party and all their critical weapon skills are going to give kenki to the samurai and it's i know it's crazy to think a skill like this could ever exist it's a completely original never before done but that's what's going to happen the samurai in 5.0 my chat was the one who elected to call it weeb hood that was not my idea so super original idea Never, never been done before. Totally original. No other job has anything like it. Just stamp it. Approve it. 5.0. We're ready to go. And then everyone plays Samurai and everyone stops bitching. Hmm. But you good Samurais out there, you fight the good fight. Play well. Just don't wear yokai watches. Put on, put on real watches. Like a Rolex. It's got more stats actually tells time at that as well so good luck samurais you will be memed even harder because this was not sufficient enough ninja you can sprint while hiding now now just to be clear you could sprint before hiding now it just you can sprint while hiding that's gonna be dope for deep dungeon now we, at least we know it was indeed a deep dungeon buff to hide. Yeah. yeah. So, yay. Black mages, they got instant teleports now. He said that it should in feel instant. Like, he legit said in an interview that these two, with these changes, you should feel like you instantly moved. Hmm. It's that initial wind-up animation I told you about. He clarified that is exactly the thing they're getting rid of. You still have the travel time, but you don't have the little delay before the travel time. So, Black Mages, enjoy. See, it's funny, Black Mage, another job that's like a pure DPS job, they get that shit, they don't get memed on. No one's memeing on Black Mage, no one's memeing on Sam. <laughs> I'm just saying. Black, Black, Mage, Mage. Black Mage has been, been in a good spot. Like, there, there's no real reason to meme on him. I'm just saying. I think it's just because they're not fighting for melee spots, to be fair. But, you know, just, you know... I think, what, did Black Mage get, like, a 2% buff last patch or something? Black Mage got some 2% buffs in its time. It, it has, but we weren't saying, like, it wasn't a job. Black Mage wasn't a job that needed a drastic change. That's the comparison. That's, that's the thing. Samurai they needed more DPS. Needs... That's what they needed. They got that. It was, like, adequate. Right. I just don't see, I just think, like, if you're going to meme on one, like, DPS-centric job, other than Ice Mage, you got you to gotta meme on all of them, you know? No. Yeah. I mean, besides the monthly monk buff, when have we mean really hard on monk? Samurai. <laughs> exactly. Every patch. <laughs> Every fucking patch. Every fucking patch. There you go. Um, Scholar. Scholar's changes. So Scholar, they said, would be usability. And it looks like they are mostly fixing the responsiveness of the fairy when, in, when issuing commands. Um, mm -hmm. Fey Union, you can now interrupt it to order other actions. Dissolve Union has only a one second cooldown if you just want to end the tether. Uh, Ether Pack's cooldown has been reduced from five to three seconds, or the recast time, I should say, has been lowered from five to three seconds. But Whispering Dawn was changed from a spell to an ability, made instant and given slightly more potency. Do you know what that does, Sly? It's been a while since I scholared. So something that's classified as a spell and something that's classified as an ability uh, changes the way they interact with buffs. M things like Rouse or Fey Illumination specifically buff spell healing. They do not buff the amount of healing you receive from abilities. So it means Rouse Whispering Dawn doesn't do anything anymore. Whispering Dawn doesn't benefit from any of the spell boosting healing buffs. So, but it's in exchange to give it a little more potency. It's still a net nerf to its healing potency and it's instant. Do you think that that the feeling of it being more responsive matters more than the lost rouse and uh, the lost rouse potency? Mm. This is tough to say. I actually 
now I actually do remember part of my scholaring when I was leveling my healers. Give me back Rouse. I'm not because Rouse at this point I think only works on Embrace. Does it? I don't think there's any other healing skills like when I think between Eos and Celine. There's there's the there's the attack speed buff. There's the healing buff. Mm -hmm. There's whisper. There, there's whispering dawn. There's the silence. There's I think it's the magic defense buff. So I think Rouse literally now only works on embrace. I thought Eos had something. Well, Eos has Whispering Dawn, but it's an ability now, so it's not going to benefit from Rouse. That's the whole point. No, no, no. Something other than that. No, she has um, Fey Illumination and... Um, what's the other one? Oh, I guess if the Aether Pact is still counted as a spell, then Rouse still works on... Actually, I don't know. I don't, is Aether Pact a spell or an ability? I don't fucking know any of these things. Again, it's been ages since I scholared, and uh, at that time, I'm just, just learning it. I'm going to be good at it. Yeah. So okay, if yeah. um okay, people are saying Ether Pact is an ability. So no, okay, so Rouse doesn't do shit for that either. Okay. All right, there you go. Yeah. Healing so magic potency. Yeah. Embrace. Rouse doesn't buff tether. Feels bad, man. Oh well, so now you just rouse if you need embrace healing, I guess. Mm. After reading through after reading through chat a little bit. So I don't know. I'm glad they're trying to make it more responsive. It's really fucking hmm. frustrating to try and play I, any of the pet jobs right now. So at least Scholar gets a little something right here. Yeah. Um, Astrologian, on the other hand, these are actually my favorite changes amongst all the jobs. They're, every, they're everyone's favorite changes. It's so gravity good. Plus light, gravity plus light speed equals just straight up good. There's moves. only there's only one thing that comes to mind when I think of gravity plus. Plus, plus uh, light speed. So let me. You won't hear it slide, but I'm gonna. I just. I gotta get. Uh, I gotta get this this audio up real quick. So uh, if you want to listen to the stream and 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 yeah. hear what it is I'm about to play, uh, you know that's this is so when you light speed and gravity, it just goes a little something like this. Oh, that's way too loud. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Nobody heard anything. <laughs> you were I realize it. Listen, I'm trying to go back and forth here. Watch here. I'll do it again. Now they can't hear you. That's the problem. All right. Now you'll hear it slide. I got to fix this thing, man. There you go. No, running in the light speed. There you go. All right, let me get the audio back on you. I gotta get. I gotta fix this problem, man. We've been. I've had it for like four weeks now, and every week I'm like, oh shit, I should have fixed that or figured out why it wasn't happening. Either way, that's 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 light speed now, pretty much. Yeah. 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 And then all the malefics had changed to uh, one point five seconds. Pretty yep. Time. So you can weave cards in between GCD, or at least not mm -hmm. clip, not like sit on GCDs. You lose a lot of GCDs in an Astro over the course of a fight. When every time you pull cards, re-roll the cards, mm -hmm. anything, unless you're doing it after a combust, pretty much, or uh, it's 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 after a combust or an aspected um, benefit. That's the only times where you like kind of get to safely do it at this point. So uh, yeah, on top and, of that, uh, uh, everything, man. Yep. And expected Helios got reduced by half a second. Yeah, that brings it yeah. down to the GCD, so you don't lose even more GCD time to aspected Helios. Mm -hmm. So basically, just a lot more time to actually use your abilities. MP cost reduction doubled, reduction to attack magic potency removed, recast time of light speeds down to two minutes. Don't forget that you can fucking extend it by 10 seconds with Celestial Opposition as well. And I guess the big takeaway here is that uh, they were trying to fix MP, and uh, I think they, they will probably have accomplished that. By the time we're done with, uh, they're they're done with all this stuff. Um, light speed doesn't reduce the global cooldown, so it's not necessarily gonna like make you get more spells out. But if you're running around and you want to use, if you need to move while using DPS, move while healing, all that stuff, you don't need to turn it off at any point. 
pretty much. You can just like, oh, let me light speed two heals and then I can just DPS during light speed for the rest of the time. It also means a lot of times you just don't have a GCD unless you're casting something like Raze. So it's like a ton of time to deal with like cards or, or anything or off GCDs or any of that stuff. <laughs> Everyone's like, there's your fucking time mage. <laughs> We're still going to get it one day. Nope, we're never going to get Astro is our time mage. Never going to get a time mage. I accept this. It's I okay. I, I believe. I believe. Okay. Team, believe. Believe with me. Believe, believe with me, what chat. You, what, okay, Naruto, what are you just doing? Believe with me. Believe. No one believes. No one's going to the Church of Sly right now. Okay? No one. No one's believing. Just, Just... Running, running, okay. running in the light speed. That's it. Every time okay. you press light speed, you need an ACT trigger that starts playing running in the 90s for the duration of it. And as soon as it wears off, it goes away. Same one day, 6.0. Nope, not happening. They got time dilation. They got celestial opposition. They cast faster. They got light speed. That's it. They're just cheating time. They're, they're time wizard. Just need a baby dragon. Um, speaking of the scholar changes, a summoner apparently did summoner and scholar um, actions with cast times can now be canceled to use a different action. So if they're in the mm -hmm. middle of casting an ability, you could just straight up say, no, fuck that. Do this other thing instead, which, again, should help with the responsiveness of the summoner pets on top of the scholar pets. Which is good. It's a good thing. Sly, are you ever going to drink the summoner juice on controller? <laughs> No. <laughs> I've Jesus. seen some good controller summoners, yeah. I don't know how they do it, but they do it. That, that's just Jesus at work right there. I'm sorry. Nah, man. They, they're just... Never... They're born gamers. That's it. They're just natural gamers. That's all it is. And no mention of Bahamut uh, being less of a dumb shit, but, you know, it's, you know, baby steps. Eventually, he's still he's Eventually. still he's still gonna be he's still gonna be this guy. <laughs> Every time whenever, he, whenever he do, whenever I think of Bahamut now, I, th I think of the uh, what was the the event in um, in Monster Hunter where we got the little the the wiggly head. That <laughs> I think of that. That's a you know what I didn't do the event, but I know what you're talking about, and I approve. Yes, I approve it's Bahamut. Uh, finally, they mentioned the, the Wiggler. The Wiggler. There you go. They mentioned yeah. uh, they have the Swallows Compass mentioned here, like halfway down the patch notes. Um, the Trials, <laughs> which are unnamed again, uh, adding Echo to some of the old stuff. Ritterana Lighthouse being incorporated, confirming Greed only will be for all Alliance raids, not just Ritterana Lighthouse, not just the old ones, all of them. Old, new. Yay! Yay! Sly, how do you do? You even need stuff from the Ritterana Lighthouse? No, I'm pretty sure like other jobs will, so eventually I'll need something. Do you want something from the Ritorana Lighthouse? Not right now. No? No. No upgrade materials, which don't need to be greeted on, no nothing? No. Not our problem, then! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I actually plan on making groups for other people who need loot, and then everyone just calls a piece, and then we try to make sure there's mm -hmm. no overlapping pieces. Wow, That's you're, it. you're pretty generous. I'm wow. I don't need shit. I might as well let other people I might as well run the shit so other people can get the stuff that they actually want. And I'm gonna I'm gonna set it so the tank in the group has like if, if a tank and one of the DPS wants the same tank piece, the tank gets priority on the tank piece. That's fair. That's fair, That's right? Same fair. with the healers. Yeah. Healers hold priority over that. It's only if the DPS want a piece that the healers or the tanks don't want. They can have any, they can have their pick of the loot. I'm just saying, I'm just, that's what I'm going to do every week. I'm going to see like, okay, who needs this? Who needs the loot? Blah, blah, blah. And then uh, that's it. And hopefully that uh, works. Hey, you know what? If I just go as the tank, I never need to worry about this because I don't need anything. <laughs> that seems like a plan to me. Um, is there anything else you get from this? Uh, each party alliance will achieve its own treasure chest, uh, regardless of the route taken, which we learned last time means nothing. You get two crack clusters per week also from it. Two grade six material a week just from finishing Ritterana, Ritterana Lighthouse, pretty much. I was surprised to see that. 
Not really. I mean, Materia has become really easy since Eureka. I mean, it was easy before that. It's become way easier with Eureka. I was just surprised to see where them. where where can't you get threat clusters now? That's the thing. Just, they're just appearing so many. That's um... Tasha. Actually, that's not true because if leveling roulette is in need, <laughs> that's not true at all. <laughs> Damn, I got shit on. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you win a piece of loot that week, you can also meld it is the big thing you basically they're giving you the two material you get per week with the piece you you get so you can just meld them immediately so meld it don't be lazy meld your gear stop selling the material and meld it stop selling it to buy dresses to buy ow dies and shit but happy lammer's the true end game now fuck that i said it i gotta put on a bunny suit on tuesday because i beat you on fucking the most recent air is Ivia, so oh yeah that was with yeah. a golden subligar yeah. though it needs to be with the golden subligar yeah. so my my law of hell is going to be pretty i pretty. bet it is um you can now enter a boss arena after the sealed area has been closed and after a certain amount of time has passed it'll actually automatically throw you into the boss arena even if you didn't say yes to the prompt I think it's good. It's specifically for 24 mans, I think, of how many people get just left behind in 24 mans. I always see, I've so often there's like one or two people that get stuck outside the room. Nah, they ain't got no mm -hmm. excuses now. You coming in here. I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with me. Listen, I went full, I always go full Rorschach, okay? Um, Palace of the Dead, they made the changes where you can give up 10 ether pool weapons and armor at a time to get one grip per 10 and then you can choose the hand in grips at pretty much any point to get the uh to get the weapons this is going to be true and have it on high as well so consider this a preview of that loot system as well it's so you you can mm -hmm. get to a certain level and you're not just giving up all of your ether pool progress and then have to start from zero again so you could go i guess let's say have it on high caps at 30 you could go to 30 spend 10 go down to 20 20 then go back up to 30 spend 10 and use that instead of going all the way down to zero pretty much right. which i like yeah it's so, a good change it's a good change this is a good retroactive change it's good for the future especially because it looks like there'll be deep dungeons will be kind of like an expansion norm like one new deep dungeon per expansion going forward so having a, a more mm -hmm. a more player friendly system will probably be a good thing i hope fingers crossed um eureka they made a few changes to searching through the player list and the prioritization of them sigma escape normal had its loose system removed it now warns you if you're accidentally skipping weekly loot and savage by queuing into something later than your progress. So like if you haven't cleared 05 savage for the week and you queue mm -hmm. into 06, and you go to queue into 06 savage, you're like, whoa, you're giving up weekly loot from 05 savage. If you do this, you understand that, right? Which is a good warning system. Do you know, you know, you, we, this is one of those things where we think who really needs this. And I know a lot of people don't know how to, they just, they, they start playing the game. They do normal mode. They go to Savage thinking it's the same and it's not. And then they just go immediately to like six or seven or something for a learning party. But doesn't it still warn you? Like it's warned you before. Like if you just go for, um, I've had this happen before. Like when I just didn't need anything else, it'd still warn me. Well, you're missing out on so-and-so before you get this. And I think it was during Delta Escape. I think, so um, I think I know specifically if you if you queue in and you have the right uh, check boxes marked, it'll tell you that somebody's cleared for the week and you'll like you're like losing a chest. You're doing a one chest or a zero chest. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think uh, I, unless the check boxes like to do that too. this type of warning. Never this word for word warning that says you are mm -hmm. for you are foregoing weekly. This has never popped up. But I guess the real question is, with the way that Sigmascape is designed, with Savage not being story related, and even though it forces linear progression, you can't do the first one without doing the next one. I don't. I still mm -hmm. wonder why we've come to the point where it still needs, after you've cleared it, why does it still need to be progressed linearly? I can understand if you've not cleared the entire raid tier, but I feel like as soon as you've cleared the raid tier... These kind, this kind of thing shouldn't happen anymore. You should still just get one piece of loot or one chance at loot per week, but just go in any order. It's not like there's a story yeah. to go from fight to fight in Savage. Savage is storyless. So what you're saying is like you'd have a week where you want, well, I guess during what if prom. you just don't want a floor anymore? 
Like, mm-hmm. what if you're just in a group and clearing every week? You just don't want a floor anymore. Like, it just, it made sense for shit like Coil. It stopped making sense after Coil for anything but normal mode. That's how I feel. I feel like once you've already cleared a full raid tier, honestly, I think we could just do away with the linear, do five, then six, then seven, then eight, unless mm-hmm. people want to do them. Um, obviously, if you're in the party finder, like if it's, I guess, a pug or something, it gets a little harder to judge. I guess, it, like, if, what if one person's cleared them all and one person hasn't? You know, how does mm-hmm. it go like that? But, I mean, as long as it gives this warning, I think this warning is enough to, to help, you know, ward off that problem, potentially. Right. So you would you would suggest like do one time you clear you get through prog you clear all all the um all the turns and then after that you don't have to go through the sequential anymore you just every week you're able to do whatever sequence you want to do. I think that there's going to be a point in time where I, that's an okay option. I I maybe not yet. I I feel like with the way Savage works out, it's completely separated from any story aspects that that mm. they could look to do that at some point. They and you need this kind of thing if you do, but now that this is here, I really feel like we can we can do it. Personally speaking. That's it. Yeah. You get Shinryu mount for 99 totems now. Awesome. They uh the duty roulette normal is there. It's got Omega, it's got Alexander, it's all normal modes. It's got tombstones. Nice. Nice. Hope you like getting 15 mendacity for wiping in, in A12 for some reason. I'm just saying, there's going to be some hilarious shit because there's going to be a lot of people that didn't do Alexander normal. And they're going to finally go back and try to get it done, and there's going to be some hilarious moments. No, no, no. The only reason why I laughed is because it actually happened because we were formatting it and tried to. Um... What was it? Oh, yeah. We don't need a full fucking LB for 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 the light, do we? Oh, you do, especially in four man. Yeah. Yep. Well, I I don't on Savage. You can get away with it. You just need to hyper mitigate it. And four man, <laughs> there's get a little bit a uh, little bit shakier. Maybe maybe uh, depending on I guess you know shake it off and crit Adlo and you know sacred soil and you know just a few other things. You know maybe you could probably still do it. Yeah. Um, our expert's going to have three dungeons again. They're adding more tombstones to the main scenario roulette. <laughs> they, your face right now very accurately describes how most people react when they see that. Like, wow. 300 poetics. <laughs> and some creation and mendacity. So the thing about creation and mendacity, reminder, you need to be level 70 <laughs> to get those. So you're not using it for leveling and getting those. Have fun. Have have fun. No. No. Don't don't have fun. No. 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 Don't. I'm good. No, you're good. Yep. You don't want to you yeah. do it. No, yep. nothing. Nothing. All right. They're adding they're adding clan mark logs for the new upgrade materials from the hunt or from Centurio seals altogether. So you can upgrade your 360 mm-hmm. up to 370 by doing that. Of course, they're gonna do the item from Ritterana plus the Rabinaster coin, you can also get an upgrade. We all expected that. Bunch of PvP changes. We'll just skip those because we don't know shit. Um, at least with the job adjustments. No reason for us to stop yeah. and talk about job adjustments. For mm-hmm. PvP itself, though, um, they're they're giving them the more their words back. If oh it's a team ranked match only, <laughs> which means everyone in the party already queued together anyway. Someone's getting their words. The people who need it the least are getting their words back. <laughs> exactly. I want my words back in normal PvP. Exactly. I want it so bad. Well, I'm sorry, in normal, in, in the Feast. Obviously, in, feast. in front lines. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, front lines is fine. Feast, just please, please, please. I will go back to hardcore feasting if you just give me back my words. I don't know if I would do it hardcore if you gave me the words. It'd be better, but... One of the so there's a change here I'm not a really big fan of though. Um, it's no mm. longer possible for players to join a PvP team once a season has started. Please ensure that any new members are fully registered before the season begins. I don't know, like that feels. I'm not. I don't hate it. Okay, so I, I, I understand me, what they're trying. 
I understand what they're trying to do. I understand what they're trying to do too. Let me present a, a mm-hmm. thing to you. Okay, PvP season starts to go for a few weeks. You know, you, whatever. You're, you're. Let's let's be honest. It doesn't take that long for the queues to die. You're playing for a day or two, right? Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, one of your one of your members has you know a problem. He can't he can't PvP anymore. Okay. Mm-hmm. If a PV, you have a full PvP team with six people, you've got one, you've got you've got a couple of reserves. But if there's mm-hmm. any point where people on your team are no longer interested or no longer capable of participating in the feast for that season, you're fucked. You can't add anyone else to that team. You like you need to be a hundred percent certain there's no substitutions for the whole season. And that's the thing about it. You have to be a hundred percent certain to why go in without that certainty. Yes, I understand things happen. But like from the from the side of oh people aren't interested. Why the fuck did you join to begin with? It's not even if so much interested. Look- it's 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 the things can happen. I don't know. I'm just not a fan. I think of the idea of just running out of members for whatever reason mm-hmm. and then just being fucked for the whole season. That's it. I just I don't know. I I get that they're trying to prevent abuse systems here. I like specifically people who join teams who are more skilled than the team is to try and bring the team up in terms of ranking and then they leave the team in the middle mm-hmm. of the season. I get that. But there's there's always a pro and a con to this. And right. when I see the con, I go, uh, the idea of just not being able to have any sort of lapse in commitment, just, eh. Again, it's, it's a two-way street. I mean, I mean, you have to be sure you have to you kind of have to gauge the people you decide you want to who want to join you and who you want to have on your team. You kind of have to gauge it and see if the interest is there. Um, are they going to stick? Are, are they worth the damn, first of all? Um, <laughs> are they going to stick? And it and after that, yeah, you. If you clear those two, then fine. Make a team. If you don't feel like that, then don't put people who are going to half-ass it on the team. I'm just saying, man, people can have personal matters that come up, and they just can't do it anymore. And then you're fucked for the whole season. Malzine says it good. I got a, I got a relative that got real sick. I need to go help them. I need, I need to go live with them. I'm going to be there with them for weeks, a month, whatever. Anything happens that's and you're fine. not able to join the game, you're pretty much fucked for the that, whole season here. Again, that's fine. And that's understandable. Shit happens. I just wish that it didn't have to punish the whole team because somebody had an emergency. That's how I feel. I just wonder if this is the best way to go about stopping abuse cases. Because it's one of those, it's, it's kind it's of... It's not. It's not. But that's the thing with the feast. It's always not. It's always not the right choice. Getting rid of chatting, it was not the right choice, but it was the choice they made. That's okay. my concern. And this... In this scenario, how without putting this restriction on, um, you know, players leaving or anything like that, how would you go about stopping the abuse cases? I don't know. I'm not. The, I I need to sit down and really look at you know the total number of people who PVP, the number of abuse cases. Mm-hmm. Like, I need information to make that judgment call. Somebody in chat says, make it so you can only join one team per season. That you can't just hop teams, you know? So if you're the team hopper, you're the person who's getting screwed. Or if you're the person who's trying... Like, that way, you want, that way, at least, if you're committed to a team and you can't play for the rest of the season, you're not just... You're not in and out of, of PvP. That team just needs to find someone else. Although, even that still has its own problems of what if somebody doesn't ends up not liking their teammates or just not... This is not a skilled enough team for them and then they want to relocate to a different team. Like, there's just... I just think it's it's a limitation. I think they're mostly putting it in place so people don't abuse preliminaries coming up mm-hmm. i think that that plays a pretty big role in it but i don't know i'm not i'm just i'm not a fan perhaps we e- esports boys right we're, we're esports right we, es- we esports man we esports just there's just for one every abuse case there's a case for some where, where people legitimately need this feature to work a certain way you know mm-hmm. for this their own their own conditions for whatever reason I don't know. I feel like this isn't the right way. Once again, I feel like with PvP, this isn't the right decision. However, if a team doesn't have people logging in for 90 days, then disband that fucking team. Totally the right decision. Yeah. There you go. So make sure for the next season, get six people in your team. So if one person needs to bail, at least you have some backups. Because if you have six, you have two people in reserve. So if somebody needs to dip, then you've got an extra person. So do it. Do it, do it, do it. 
Um, they're going to be introducing the daily challenge for Frontline. So only one Frontline's map will be available per day. And there'll even be a roulette for it, which is not a roulette. It's just one button that says, there's a button that says daily challenge. And there's a button that lets mm-hmm. you queue into just queue into it, which I, it's redundant, but it's what it is pretty much. And with that, they're making changes to secure. To make it, I guess, more fun. <laughs> to try to make it. I like secure. I just thought that it, it was paced pretty poorly. They added battle high. They cut down the time. They changed mm-hmm. the way rating is adjusted during when people are KO'd, changed up the monster mm-hmm. placement, and they made it so that all contributions to an enemy um, give you points, kind of like Shatter. So in other words, you'll love the new secure, whereas I'm still a Sealed Rock boy. Always be Shatter boy. Oh, yeah. I don't know what's wrong with you, Shatter boy. Always be a Shatter boy. I don't know why you're a Shatter boy. It's fun. <laughs> if you say so. I'll, I'll I'll let you have that opinion. Thank you. I won't un- I won't understand it. I won't support it. But I'll let you not have. A lot it. of people do, not a lot of people do. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Um, Crystal Tower Training Grounds. They redid the map entirely. It's not random in the center mm-hmm. anymore, and you have a side to fight for. Um, when you respawn, you respawn back on your team's side, like the old school maps were. I wonder if they cycle back. At this point, you might as well cycle the other maps back in because you basically made it like the old maps anyway. Basically, I don't. I I just think that now it doesn't make sense to only have one map where you can PvP. Um, just I don't see. I don't see the advantage of it from a development side. I would rather have random maps to begin with. I mean, the, the or, idea is always or, or the a same. rotation, or a rotation. <laughs> Not really a rotation, but you know. I I know what you mean, but I'd still just rather it be random. Like you get a map. I mean, if you're PvPing, if you can't if you can't figure out that walls being in a different place means you need to do something different, you're not going very far in PvP anyway. All right. There's other changes being made to PvP that I'm a little concerned about as well. They said that when the season ends, they're gonna basically like look at your rank, and you'll have that rank going into preseason. And then when you start the next season, depending on... I'd have to read the whole thing exactly. But basically, if you're someone who PvPs frequently, you'll start as a higher rank when the next season mm-hmm. comes around. Um, and that just means the people who get to top 100 and stop will just stop all the earlier because there's still no rank decay. I think by the time they make this decision, by the time the next season, I think we're getting rank decay. I don't know why I'm they brought it up by name and just don't do it. I'm optimistic that we're getting ranked decay soon. This kind of like again, it this kind of change without ranked decay just seemed it, it seems sports like, not even esports like. It seems sports like, and um, yeah, the point of having that preseason rank, quote unquote, in sports is to fight for it. And without decay in this in this sense, it's meaningless. So yeah, if they're gonna make if they're gonna do this, they're putting in decay. 90 percent sure i don't know what they're waiting for i don't know what they're like going because they they brought it up before haven't done it i -hmm. just i don't know where their the translation was lost of like hey we're thinking about it to never mind we're not going to mention it for the next three patches i just want to know how we got from that from a to b maybe this maybe they were waiting for this i don't know what they're waiting for Whatever the reason, I rank decay, I'm still in the boat of needs to happen. You need to force people to maintain their spot, not let them get mm-hmm. there and sit there, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Some people keep queuing after they're there. Some people want to climb through the top 100 as long as it may take. But there's a lot that just sit there. All because they want to make sure that the new players don't get stomped by the veteran players at the start of the season. Which is what this is clearly trying to accomplish. It's a roundabout way to accomplish it. Uh, yeah, I either know. Either way. Either way. They're... I think the bigger Even problem is PvP is just not great. <laughs> That's the bigger problem. Yes. But either way. If, even if they didn't do this, they would still get stuck. Some way, somehow, they would still get stuck. Yeah, that's the truth. That's the truth. And they're going to eventually treat like Chocobo Racing where they'll just put NPCs in there. Yeah. <laughs> put squadron members in there if if the fucking, if not enough players join in. 
That's that's gonna be the solution one day. Um, they're fixing up the UI, making it show a lot more information. Reminds me of things like World of Warcraft, where they show what you've kind of specced into, in a sense, or what you've chosen as your extra abilities. Um, on top mm-hmm. of showing who has how many medals uh, under the score, showing buffs and debuffs much more clearly. It's it's all really good from a UI perspective. So glad to yeah. see that they're uh, they're doing those things at least. Got new items, including the male bunny suits. Up, updates to the crafting menu to show craftsmanship recommendations for newer players. So they're like, oh shit, what? How, what, how many stats do I need to make this? I don't know, I've never made it before. It'll say at the bottom, it recommends this much craftsmanship, this much whatever. You know, not a requirement, mm-hmm. but what it recommends you have before trying, which is good for new player information. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I like it. I'm, I'm always down for more clarity, personally. They added some quality of life stuff for fishing, some new items to gathering points, because we know there'll be new gathering and crafted gear, currentized quests. Now, one thing people are talking about, there's a picture of the doggo mount. Sly. Yes, there is. People who can see colors well tell me that this almost all but confirms, or at least pushes them in the likelihood of thinking Tsukiyomi is indeed the choice. There's, there's the other moon god, whose name I always forget. But people see, apparently they see the colors of this and go, this is very much in line with Tsukiyomi's color scheme as a god or goddess of some kind. So, Doggo? Tsukiyomi confirmed? Question mark? Maybe. Maybe. I'm never going to get them out anyway, so I guess I don't really give a shit. Meh. 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 Are you going to get this? Are you going gonna to focus on trying to get him down day one? The extreme. You just gonna you gonna log in and get that done. Since we don't gotta stay in the realm that day, you ain't gotta you ain't gotta worry about much. I'll just do it. Once I get it clear, I might help out a few people, but I'm not gonna focus on the dog. If I get a dog, I, here's the thing: I'm not gonna get the dog. I'm not gonna get the dog. <laughs> Went from if I okay, get the just, dog, I'm not gonna get the dog. No, no. You, we've already talked about my shitty luck. I'm not gonna get the dog. What about the bard? If I go in. See, Haps, what you're doing is you're trying to make me want shit. And if I want this shit, I'm not going to get it. So I'm going in with no expectations. I don't want shit. I just want to clear. Sounds like you're getting ready for Monster Hunter on the on the Switch. You're, turn, you're trying to turn the desire sensor all the way down. Yeah. You're like, for every Monster Hunter patch, for every patch and anything, I you know I just don't want. Maybe I just don't want it at all. No. I'm not even no. thinking about it. So, Mm-mm. you know, if I'm cool, if I already get it, whatever, you know. I ain't, I ain't hurting for it. No, no, I don't want it. I'm, talking, I'm not hurting. Whatever, be cool. But I, I don't need it. You know, so forget about it. There you go. Uh, but I'm sure you want the new minions, considering one of them is one of your girls. Sadu. <laughs> you got a, you got a Sadu minion. You don't even want. You don't even want. The Dathar. No. You don't, no. You don't want nothing to do with any of the Dathar. <laughs> he's got a warrior axe. Dude, he's a minion with a warrior with a fucking Titan axe. <laughs> nothing. No. I'm good. No, nah, you good? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Just give him my Sadu minion. All right. He just I'm wants good. his Sadu minion. Those are probably from the Namazu, I'd imagine. Do they in the awesome step? Right? Right. They had new achievements that they won't tell us the name of because, you know, preliminary patch notes. Um, you can now, so in in rooms, you can now synthesize, repair, die, cast glamours, assimilate materia, and retrieve materia in in rooms. I am so happy right now. You know how many times I've gone <laughs> to put something in the armoire and it's been like mm-hmm. 99% durability and then I can't repair it in there? Or in the glamour, you know how often that happens. You know how sometimes you just want to craft in peace. You can craft in peace now. When's the last time you've been to an in room? I go there every patch. I always there's always cutscenes I miss. I always have to go back and watch. <laughs> or if I want to, or if I have something that's now armoireable, armoireable. Yeah, it's not a good word. I agree. That's a pretty good Scrabble word. I never need to... I can just stay there all the time now. I've got all these things. All these activities. I've got all this room for activities. 
you know where else you have room for activities? Where do I have room for activities? An actual fucking house. <laughs> There's, dude, where's where's my armoire in the house? Where's my fucking glamour dresser in the house, huh? You would make it and put it in there. That you can't. That doesn't exist. Not the glamour dresser. That shit doesn't exist. You gotta go back to in or your barracks. You can have the armoire, but you can't have the glamour dresser. People want yeah. it, but it doesn't exist. Yeah. I'm just saying, man. I, now that they're changing the glamour system so that it's less of a pain to use, I'm gonna stick some shit in there. You know, the bunny suit's going in there. I'm just saying that that's where that's where the bunny suit's going. I'm not keeping that shit in my inventory. That shit's going. That shit's going way away. It's like that song from Yellow Card. You're just giving me a look, Sly. That Sly's I'm done with you, Happy. Look. Just just get a fucking house, Happy. <laughs> I have one. I'm a tenant in Mel's house. It's her house, but I'm a tenant. Yay. Good. Craft in peace. It's not, but it's not, but there's, there's like, I just, I sit down in a hot tub. That's not crafting. Imagine you could craft in the hot That would be cool. I'd craft while sitting in the hot Like, not even, like, just doing it. you just, like, chilling in the hot tub. Just like, ugh. All right. All right. Ugh, knock that out. Oh, yeah. This is relaxing. Got some bubbles going and shit. Do we have any hot tubs that have bubbles? That you can, like, right-click them and then, like, bubbles? Do we need some hot tubs with bubbles? No, we don't. Why not? No. Why not? What, you don't want one, just... you don't want one in the slide crib? You don't want one in the script club? Well, we have a we have a little hot tub outside anyway. No, but you know, see, you need you need to get some bubbles in there. You need to, you need a bubble bath. You need a bubble bath of some kind. You, you're, you're trying to overcomplicate a hot tub. No, I'm not trying. Listen, then then we do the bubble bath. Just give me a regular bubble bath. All right. Give me just a hot bubble bath with some water pressure on the side. I'm just saying. We went we went from an in room to hot tubs. God damn it, happy. Yo, that's that's rags to riches right there, and that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that defines rags to riches, Sly. An in room to goddamn hot tubs or bubble baths, you know. I'm just saying we could have some cool hot tubs and bubble baths and shit. Just crack open. Chat, don't enable him. Enable don't me. Enable him. Enable no. me. No. I'm just trying to get the party started, Sly. I bet you are. We got cat girls. We got girls. We got femros. We got elves. We got whatever you need. <laughs> we got hot tubs for it. There you go. We got the ERP all over the place. All right. Uh, Cross world link shells are going to exist soon. I'll be making one. They can only hold up to 64 people initially, though. And you can only be in one. Choose wisely. Choose wisely indeed. I feel like, again, this is part of the limitation that they have with uh, where they said they, they, they didn't want to put too much in terms of resources into it initially. They wanted to see how people used it. So I have mm -hmm. a feeling that as patches go on, more than one cross world link shell, probably more spaces inside of Definitely. the uh, yeah, inside of them as well. So, uh, yeah, choose uh, choose wisely. And if you don't have enough people in it, it's just going to get bye bye destroyed pretty much. Let's see. Invitees. I'm just trying to make sure I read everything. Yep, yep, yep. No leaders. Withdrawing just spam. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, we're good. I uh, I got a, got a happy club that we're going to make. The good news is if you can only have one, then filling to the 64 becomes a little more, you know, people got to choose. So maybe they won't all just go to every single one. Mm -hmm. But uh, you and I aren't competing for Cross World Link Shell Space Sly. So we're good. No, we're not. No. It's all right. You know, you, I'll make a character over you, on Primal. You make a character on Gilgamesh. We join each other. So it'll be it'll be a fun time. And then we never yeah. log into those characters ever again. Never. Yeah, Velvet Room Cross World Link Shell. It'll be all right. Hey, hey, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, all the changes to the glamour dresser. One of the big ones here is that you now don't need to put the glamour on a plate. You can actually apply glamours directly. A singular piece. Um, does not require glamour prisms, and I think you need to be at 
the glamour dresser in order to do it. I don't think you can do it away from that, but you can still do it. So you can put items in there. You can now take them out so it can effectively be storage and you can apply singular item glamours directly from the glamour dresser. So a lot of quality of life changes right there. Sly, are you going to finally stick some stuff? I've literally refused no, to put any items in there. No, no, Why? I'm not. Why? No. Why? I'm just like it never. First of all, when it when it when they when they introduced it, it sounded risky. I was like, "Fuck it, I'm not gonna touch it." No. Now, now it's not risky definitely. anymore. I'm fine. But now, but now you just uh, don't think you need it. I just don't need it. But what about all that Eureka? Or oh, wait a minute. <laughs> if they never upgraded again, it's already been delegated to Glamour for me. So. Dude, Glam's just the true end game. You can even link Glamour plates to your uh to your um your gear sets now. Oh my god. Dude, I need this. I have to put on the fucking championship belt next week, alright? I need these changes. And you'll That's need funny. them one day if you win the if you win the belt back. That is, if I want to win it back. You See, will you make win, it like, gimmicky. What if I just If lose? you make it gimmicky. I'm I'm gonna tank every fucking time if you make it fucking gimmicky. Gimmicky. No. The last one wasn't gimmicky. The last one was just easy. Uh, what'd you? We didn't get a lightning suit. round, so it was easy. The bunny suit. Oh, I mean, you can just if you don't, you know, I that was my condition, and then I won. I I made that condition thinking I was gonna lose, and then I and then I ate shit and actually won. Exactly. <laughs> If you ever make a condition like that again, I am fucking tanking. And tanking. You at least need to wear the belt, no matter what. Yeah, that's fine. the The belt is the belt is key here. All right, the bunny suit I threw in because we were celebrating a new feature. All right. All right. We'll be uh, we'll be okay. Yeah, and the chat brings up we haven't quizzed Ethis in a pretty long time, mostly because he told us our questions sucked. Yeah, basically that's why. That's why we're not going to. We we like. You, chat, come up with better questions than we do. So I do like the idea of, like, Happy and myself versus Ethis. I, I love that idea to eat fucking Cremas, but I love that idea. I'm, I'm down for then it. Then we can just get them to ask the questions. And we just quiz at this. We just each get our communities to, to give us, like, a certain number of questions. And we see which one of us he gets the most right for. And uh -huh. then I don't know what that means. <laughs> We, we, we would need a, a neutral party in this, though. Yeah, like, that's why Ethos we're not the ones making... Oh, you mean... Wait, no. A neutral, you mean someone who doesn't Some, tell Ethos the answer? Yeah, someone who takes the questions and, like... We need we need proper vetting for this. Like, we can't well, we just, can just have ask Ethos. Ethos, <laughs> <Well, laughs> is this a good question to ask you? <laughs> we'll ask uh, Anonymous. He can vet him. Would he have the time to? I don't know, but he could, he could vet them. You know. I'm just saying. Um, they're adding some new icons to identify things you can do with certain items. Oh, my God. Sly, I think I've finally hit a feature that I actually want deleted from the game. What is that? The duty record. You know what? One day we're going to actually get a good duty recorder. No, we won't. It's going. No, we won't. Yes, we will. I read this and I'm, I'm I... now even more sad than when it first came out. So when the duty recorder first came out, they said mm -hmm. it would only work for Biako and Biako Extreme. The reason for mm -hmm. that was that they were afraid because the duty recorder was still new that it would have issues that might cause crashes, they might cause instant whatever. It, it just they they didn't know how it would affect instances, so they used Biako sort of as a testing ground. Must have not been mm -hmm. that great because now not only are they just adding 08 Savage, it's the only thing, no 05, 06 or 07, only 08. They're taking away Biako as if it can't handle more than one type of instance at a time. It can't even do normal mode. At least did Biako normal mode. In what world would you want to go back and look at footage anyway of Biako? Why would at this point why would I want to go back and look at oh fucking eight? And if I was gonna go look at it, I'd just I would it. rather go I would rather go back and look at 08 than fucking Biako. I'd fall asleep. <laughs> but turn it to slow motion for the air phase. There you go. Call it a lullaby. 
I'm just like, yo, listen, if this is all you're going to use it for, just get rid of the fucking thing. Just stop. Just, it doesn't, just, it just, don't even delete it. Just stop updating it. Nothing. That's it. Happy. I believe in this feature. I, I believe in that one day it will actually, you know, be good and it will actually include a lot more fights. It'll be useful. If it's going to include more fights, it looks like it'll include them one at a fucking time. You're really trying to shoot this down, man. I'm just like, what is... Why? <laughs> just, I look at it and I go, why? Why? Have you had faith in this feature? I don't. One day. I don't. I, I do. I was so I excited. Do. I was crushed by this feature. I still I still am. I still am, but not... Ne I'm excited for what it's going to be. What it, what it is now doesn't matter to me. I'm not going to use it. But... What it will be, I'm excited for. You know what it'll be? Go ahead and say it. Happy. Probably uh, 012 Savage in about seven months. I'd like to point out one other thing about this. They just mm -hmm. added a new normal and extreme trial, and they didn't even put that in the list. Well, these are preliminary notes. Sly, they're not going to put extra instances in the fucking notes. It would say question mark, question mark, question mark. And question mark, question mark, question mark, extreme. I'm just saying, like, it, <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't make any sense. That's it. I'm done. I'm done with it. The feature's done to me. I have no faith in it. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done or dead, dead. Done. Someone in the chat. Yeah, next thing we know, it'll be used for fucking Lords of Verminion. Can, can we stop shitting on this, please? No. Tetra Mat Well, it can't be Tetra Master. It has to be Triple Triad. Triple Triad Recorder. There you go. Those high-intensity matches. whoop de doo Alright. So you can do uh, players recruiting... <laughs> Players recruiting members for an alliance or custom match can now choose which alliance or team to participate in, including the spectator. So you can make a match and then invite people and still play the spectator instead of being the ninth person invited to the match. Unending Journey is going to get a new category for things like Palace of the Dead and Forbidden Land of Eureka. They're making changes to the way that non-player party members are displayed on the mini-map. Talked about this last time. They look like little triangles instead. <clears throat> so shit like turrets and fairies and whatnot. Um... <laughs> We now have two wink emotes. We have wink right and wink left. I can't wink with my oh, left God. eye. You, can you wink the same with both eyes? Or does one eye feel like really funny? Wait, weird? wink the same with both eyes? Like, you know, like, isn't that just just for, for, no, because for, no, I mean, not at the same time. I mean, like, when oh. you wink with one eye, but then you go to wink with the other, does one of them, like, look more fucked up than the other one? Like, yeah, it does. Yeah. For me, it's like my right eye is normal and my left eye is like, just like it's like it's it's like I had a stroke and lost half lost feeling on half the side of my face. Exactly. Just like <laughs> just my head, my whole face starts hanging down. Uh, yeah. So I'm curious. Our dude, our our character is just that talented. They can they can wink with both eyes. There you go. Not at the same time. That's that. You're right. That is blinking. Half a blink is a wink. Two two winks is a blink. There you go. Uh, HUD layout. Has some more filter names, colorblind settings being added to the game. Yeah. Shadow Realm. Initiate the Shadow Realm. I want to see how dumb I can make my screen look when they when they introduce it. Because I think I'm I it just I don't think you can make like very significant changes. I think it's just three modes and how much the filter is enabled. But uh, mm. you know, just I want to play a day in the Shadow Realm. Okay. I wanna I wanna do it. I think it'll be fun. Then they just added a bunch of stuff to the different various settings. They added some new commands like uh, YOL dance, which I read as YOLO dance the first time. So one of the one of the the YOL tribe they have a dance. I'm assuming for the Namazu festival in particular. Mm -hmm. um, elucidate, explain yourself to any who will listen. Ponder, so we have our own thinking emoji in game. I love thinking emojis. Mm -hmm. And then we have left wink. Perform the wink emote with your left eye. Nope. It just looked... It just... Stop trying. Just stop. Just stop. Just... No. No. 
Okay. There um, you go. And that's everything. That's everything. <laughs> That's, that's everything. That's pretty. I mean, there's a few like other little things after that. You can't transfer your character save data from PS2 to PS4 anymore. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's so cute. Oh. They actually still mention the PS3 in patch notes. That's so cute. That's, it's not. It's not officially dead. <laughs> now it is. <laughs> now you literally <laughs> cannot transfer the save data anymore. So it's gone. Every shred of the PS3 has now been removed. Press F to pay respects, please. Press F to pay respects. Exactly. Press F for the PS... I got a big fat one down here. I got the fat OG one right here. At my feet. Because that's where I put my fucking consoles. Here, where, let, me, let me grab this thing. <laughs> Look at it. Let's see. There we go. Look at that. Oh, it's so dusty. Because <laughs> I don't use the fucking thing. There you go. Wow. Rip, rip that thing right there. See that? This thing's fucking heavy. <laughs> See when I say, are, are you gonna hold a Viking funeral for it and burn it somewhere? <laughs> Imagine I just like, <laughs> like right now, Melvin, 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 like, what the fuck is that? Listen, that thing still has Persona Three Fez on it. There's a reason to keep it. It's got demons. Hey, there you go. It's got demon souls on it. Yeah. There you go. It's got. I've got reasons for it to exist still. You know. Not good, not great ones, because I would much prefer having up-to-date options, but you know, options, you know. Options. And those, and then those were those were the patch notes. A lot of stuff we already knew, but we got some pretty good discussions out of it, Sly. Yeah. There were also there were also some more interview things. There were more interview things, Sly. Have you gotten to see the interviews? No, I have not. Oh, you're gonna we're gonna have a good time then, because we're gonna quickly go into those. You, I told you it could still potentially be a long show, Sly. <laughs> and it has been. It's been it has hours. been a full-length show, yeah. Although a lot of it's oh. me being salty about the duty recorder. That's like eight minutes. It's me being salty about the duty recorder. All right, so let's see. It's in the chat for Zoom. Thank you. I Never mind, it's not because I fucking just put the rest of my wow. description. Well, that's the rest of my description. So now you know you can support my channel on Patreon right there, Sly. <laughs> I know where to get some hap coffee now. Thank you. Yeah, you do. All right. And so at the very bottom, yeah, at the very bottom, it's now there. All right. Thank you. So, okay. So there's quite a few interesting comments about this. We already spoke about some of them. Um, main story is not really much to say about it. Just that uh, not really much of anything. Um, the next trial against the Four Lords will be in 4.4. That's been confirmed. Dome and Reconstruction we just covered. Uh, Namazu will focus on a festival. New gear for crafters and gatherers. Um, one of the things about Disciples of Handerland is that there will be another, quote, test case, unquote, that they're implementing. Cannot release further information because it could affect the economy regarding Disciples of Handerland. So something in the patch mm -hmm. is something they haven't done before with Disciples of Handerland, and they're afraid of it. Now, do we think this is that side quest that they mentioned? And if so, how could that possibly affect the economy? I don't think it's a side quest. I think it's something specific to you know, actual disciple hands playing not just a quest, but something else. You think it could be script related? No, not script related. Mm -mm. I just can't pin what it would be. But I, I can't, like, could you really see one quest changing the whole entire econ economy? No, I couldn't. But I also don't know that adding new gear or, or, or whatever, anything else that's been mentioned could do it. So... I'm just reaching. I'm trying to figure out what it could be because that's just adding new gear. It isn't a test case. I mean, maybe the amount of materia slots that are available. Maybe the way you obtain materia for crafters gatherers. Maybe that. I don't that would know. Be the only thing, that would be the only thing I could think of as materia. It's just, it's got to be something involving the gear or what you can make. And for that, I don't know what necessarily is a test case. So the form, the progression form is something that has to be looked at. I just don't know what it is. Because I know they're always talking about how it's really tough for new players to catch up on crafters. So if they added like another materia slot, it get, that's one more guaranteed meld that you'd be getting. And that would help a lot of the like newer crafters coming in. They'd still have to get the materia though, which is its own set of things for a lot of new players. Yeah, and that's not a big issue, so I don't think it would really be that either. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We'll just have to. We'll have to see. Because other than the Wonder's Tale stuff, I mean, that's it's pretty much been standard the way the slots have been done up till now. Right. 
Um, moving on to the Ritorana Lighthouse, they talk about how it is going to be a massive story. Based on feedback from the first one they did, they said this one's going to be very, very long, comparatively. They also didn't want to mention if Yiazmat's going to be there in any way, shape, or form. They're just like, oh, no, we'll just... Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know how to take that. Because someone suggested they could do it like Proto Ultima, and I'm just like, don't do that. I don't want, I don't want to throw Yiazmat and Proto Ultima in the same sentence. I don't want to do that. <laughs> but that wouldn't be a good nod to it, honestly. I think that would be a good way to in- integrate it, even though we do have a sour taste in our mouth with Proto Ultima. That'd be a good way to do it. You know, just make it a little bit, a little bit more rare. You know, some, some group C Proto, um, not Proto Ultima. Some groups see Yiazmat, some groups, some groups don't. Here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. Yiazmat's going to be the battle challenge at FanFest for 24 man, right? And then they're going to proto Ultima it. I'm fucking calling it right now. Have you shut your horn now? I'm t- I'm, it's fucking happening. No. That's it. That's no. that's my prediction. That's going to be the 24 man available at FanFest, Yiazmat. That's Moving what, on. That's my prediction. There you go. It's been done. I said it. It's done. It's predicted. There you go. I'm waiting on it. Um, moving on. Eureka. Uh, Pagos will start at level 20. Go up to 30. Uh, on the most adjustments, which you just went over. Pagos in 4.36. Here's the vertical elements comment. Falling off and you can only reach by jumping off from a higher ground. Then they mention the happy bunnies. Are you looking forward to the happy, uh, Mr. Happy Bunnies? Yeah. I can go full shit eating grin mode if you want. You already are there. No, so. I was doing pu- I was doing pun face. This is pun face. This is shit eating grin. You gotta get the head tilt in there. Otherwise it doesn't work. I mean it's a feature. That's that's the best I can say. It's a feature. <laughs> The good news is the Eureka weapons will eventually be super high item level way later in the expansion, and they confirm they will mm-hmm. always have five slots, which is a nice thing because good. I really like that the stuff had five slots on it because it it made it stand out from standard gear around the same item level in a pretty substantial way. Especially looking at right now, it's directly comparable to crafted gear, where you don't have five guaranteed melds. Obviously, it was a little bit later, but players now kind of have a set path of what they can take and hoping that they do upgrade the armor again at a certain point by the way you do need to finish the animo story to get to pagos because you need to be elemental level 20 in order to go into pagos at all so get that done sly you got till 4.36 you'll be fine you only be able to upgrade your weapon this time not yet there will not yet be armor upgrades he uses a lot of at the current moment like present tense kind of things so Mm -hmm. we'll definitely get more armor upgrades now we've got ultima weapon comments it has a faster tempo than bahamut because it's a shorter fight great great i'm excited perfect i'm excited yay i'm so excited i'm so excited Sly. Now five things are gonna happen at once. It's all right. right. I, it's all right. Listen, just, just get good. That's it. I'm just worried. Yeah, a chat just brought. I'm worried that Black Mage, man, they they're gonna need those instant teleports because <laughs> generally faster tempo means more movement, and Black Mage is like, oh, come on. <laughs> I guess it's like, come on. Why? Why did you have to do this? Um, so I'm expecting there won't be as many breaks, kind of like what we were talking about with Layla. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking too. Like they're saying the fa- the phase transitions are faster, so yeah, hardly any breaks, hardly any time to recoup, re uh, reheal. Like you would have to reheal on the spot right when you finish something. Um, because I'm trying to think what the longest break was, and I think that was what Golden Muhammad. Yeah, waiting for Golden, one. waiting for Golden Muhammad. Um, you're dead for half, like more than half of that wait. And it's more cinematic mm-hmm. than anything else. Um, right. But as soon as you, the Phoenix gets you up, it's, you know, rebuff for Monk. I know I have to get my five stacks. I have to move over to a uh, coral stance and basically get ready mm-hmm. to start over. Uh, but 
for this, I guess we won't have, we probably won't have that. In a 15 minute fight, you really can't do like a 30, 40 second intermission like that. Yeah. It takes a lot away, but we don't know exactly. We don't know if it's like 15 minutes, 16, 17. All we know is it's shorter than Bahamut, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, but another thing is they made a very clear point that they didn't go too hard with DPS checks. And it's, it's a fight that's mostly about solving the mechanics rather than simple DPS checks. Now, when we had Layla on a few weeks ago, he said that they think this is by design. It's already at max item level. They want any composition to be able to beat it. But do you think the fact that they're maybe emphasizing that there aren't any serious or they're not too serious of a DPS check might be a little bit discouraging for some people who are kind of all about that min-maxing? Or do you think that it just makes people want those meta comps even more because now they can get through the fight even yeah, faster than is intended. I don't see why that would be discouraging. Well, people always like to the the DPS or I guess the the group's total DPS to be tested. Like the groups that are generally mm -hmm. in that 1% want to I guess have to be kind of pushed to the limits in a sense. We're the gordiest people. That's what I like to say. We're the I like to say the 1% a lot of a lot of people that make them up are the gordiest generation. I still think they're I think, still think there's an overarching DPS check in regards to the fight itself. Like again, this it's these fights are endurance fights. So um while there might not be, you know, the DPS check you're used to, like in the end, like the entire fight itself, I classify as the DPS check. That that's like not not just section by section, um primal by primal to ultima but i still think like in not having a hardcore dps check within each which in each phase of the fight doesn't take away from the fight no um i don't think i think people are still going to have a comp no matter what even though you know it says you can clear this with anything really you can yeah i you mean can. ultimate had been cleared with everything at some point or another yeah, I'm sorry, we have to I have to get used to calling it unending coil or ultimate Bahamut. Can't just say ultimate anymore. You have to say ooh. You have to say ooh. No, now it's now it's it's either ooh, ooh or it's uh ukab. Ukab. Yeah. Ooh or ukab. Those are those are the two ones. I yeah, that. I honestly think people I think honestly think people still have a comp, no matter what. All I know is them saying that, I'm like so Monk's looking okay for me right now, right? I'm looking at my raid group, and they're just like, yeah, because mm -hmm. we play Ninja for that? And I'm like, do we need it? Define need. Yeah, I just think... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going back to what I was saying, I just think um, overall, like, it's a 15-minute fight. It's a 15-minute fight. You have to... You, you're going to have to kind of have a pace. It's not going to be just strictly DPS in section, section, but by the time you hit 15 minutes and you're still going through the fight, you're going to realize something's off and you're probably going to die. Anyway. Okay. Well, they say that you're going to die. You're going to die a lot. Like when you die, you're going to die. Like everything's going to crumble immediately. It's going to be like that, which is very reminiscent mm -hmm. of the older Realm Reborn days where one mechanic mistake pretty much did mean that. Um, mm -hmm. and let me find the exact quote. This ultimate fight moves very fast. If the total fight length shorter and the battle will be over a few minutes faster, but in exchange phase transitions are faster, and when a wipe occurs, it's instant. <laughs> Ain't no coming back from a wipe. Not in this one at the very least. So I'm curious to see, and I'm good. If they, I'm, I'm glad that they're focusing on making the, them feel like different encounters and it doesn't just feel like it's scripted the exact same way Ultimate mm -hmm. Muhammad is. I'm just wondering how long each of the, the primals will be out then. How long will Garuda, Titan, and Ifrit really be on the field? If they're looking to speed up the the tempo of this fight, maybe a minute and a half, two minutes at most. That's one I, I say two minutes max. I think that's so too. Six minutes. That's six minutes plus you're like however long I'd say like what three four seconds for a transition, something like that. Like yeah. If, there's, if they're saying that the transitions are quicker, um, how long do we wait for um, Heaven's Fall? Heaven's, Heaven's Fall. Fall Heaven's quick. Fall. You don't get to target him again because you do Heaven's Fall plus. Um, the the dives on all the people mm -hmm. like the ones that hit people individually it hits four and four um mm. so there's that to consider and then he dives back down on the tank as well so i'd have to imagine that you know looking at things like titan i'd have to imagine titan immediately comes down with a geo crush 
and then immediately does like landslides into like a stomp or something like i don't know something like he i imagine that kind of tempo where when titan comes down he is immediately throwing free things at you especially when they say things like their concept for ultimate titan they they integrated that into this so the ideas they came up with for ultimate titan they're like yeah just use those yeah i just better see a rock born please please like he's gonna land he's gonna eight way landslide he's gonna target two people to become the rock so they have to be spread out far enough and then he's gonna Mm -hmm. simultaneously do and then like as soon as that's done he's gonna do the fucking sumo stomp and it's gonna have some sort of additional effect i like the rock mourn i like that Oh, and then there's that. and then there's gonna be weights, yeah. And then there's gonna be weights while he, while he's doing the stomp. Like it's gonna be some stupid, crazy shit, and I'm so pumped for it. I'm so fucking pumped. It's gonna be me. As for the rewards, we know it's a weapon, but they're, it's mm-hmm. a very odd wording. So apparently, for the Realm Reborn jobs, they're gonna be using a reused OG relic model. It's going to be an, an amped up OG relic for the Realm Reborn. For the mm-hmm. Heavensward and Stormblood, they will say they said they'll choose a design that represents the job, meaning they'll just go for a weapon that they feel accurately showcases what people kind of relate with the job. Now, obviously, for Stormblood, they can't just use the relics because they're in Eureka. For Heavensward, they still technically could use the anima, but we don't know that they will. So I'm interested to see how these stand out from the relics because relics already get really shiny but they do eventually change model so i want to see what these actually end up looking like i don't really have much in the way of expectations i don't either i don't want to <laughs> don't I want to be let down i don't want to be let down that's the thing <laughs> that's why i choose like, again choosing not to have expectations to be crushed what is this fucking dodgeball? I never thought I'd get to quote yeah. dodgeball so often, but the last like yeah. month has been dodgeball city for me. Yeah, I find that if I have no expectations, then I'll never be let down. I gotta tell you, okay. it feels great. <laughs> um, nice. yeah, and then deep dungeon they just clarified a bunch of stuff that like the weapon upgrading part ends by four thirty. There's gonna be a dodo mount available in there and you'll understand why if you reach the hundredth floor so expect something hilarious waiting for you maybe not a bench but something i was gonna go a bench like yeah we're whatever we're gonna get a we're not a gonna get a, i don't think we're gonna get a hank's bench this time we're, we're gonna get a tea set You're gonna go <laughs> what does that have to do with a dodo no, no i'm just saying like at the end at the end of um deep dungeon it was it was a, it was a bench and I thought we we all thought the bench was gonna do something special. No, you just sat on the bench. And you got your thing and you left. You got your glass pumpkin or the other items and you just pieced out. Yeah. This time it's gonna be a tea set. You're gonna sit down. It's gonna be like a, a tatami. You're gonna sit down, you're gonna have tea, and you're gonna leave. It's gonna be the last dodo because they're they're thought to be extinct. That's it. Or it's gonna be someone with a dodo farm just chilling at the top. Um, something else that was mentioned here is apparently the Keekerns were originally designed to be the 4.2 Beast Tribe quests for 4.0. They even had an area dedicated, set aside for where they were going to put them. Hmm. So they had actually intended, instead of 4.2 being the Ananta, they were going to be Keekerns. I would have loved that. That would have been... I wouldn't have. I think that would have been... I think, I think that no matter what, like they'd have to have done something pretty spectacular to have uh, mm-hmm. done them over the Ananta. Because the Ananta quests did end up coming out pretty good. So I'm not disappointed yeah. with those. But the Keekerns have been around for such a long time. That's why it would have been underwhelming. I don't think so. I think that I feel like they probably had some decent plans. But I feel like now, whatever plans they have, they'll probably be better by the time we actually do get them. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd have to imagine that for Keekerns, they would have been in the Peaks. Because that's where, you know, all the, the hostile ones are. And, you know, we've we've tried peace talks with them before, so... I'm a, I hope they do still decide to let us explore the Heekern Beast Tribe at some point. I feel like if they already had an idea for it, they've got to do it eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the only other question is, where is the actual Ritter Runner Lighthouse mentioned? And it's very unclear if he actually means Eorzea, which would mean Aldenard plus the surrounding islands, or if they're just using Eorzea as a term for Heidelin. Because I feel like in interviews, they do that a lot. They'll say, oh, on Eorzea. But Heidelin is... 
the whole planet or, or the whole shard, whereas Eorzea is just Alvinard and the surrounding islands. So uh, not made entirely clear where it actually is, but we'll find out. All we know is a lot of story this patch. Four Lords is going to be very story focused, main story, very story focused, lots of side stories. Still got to do Hildebrand before 0.35. Add that to the list of side quests I need to get done. Yeah. That's going to be fun. Um, and yeah, so looking forward to seeing what they actually come up with, what how it actually ends up working out, if the stories end up playing out well, and hopefully it's a quality patch. I think it's a quality patch. I'm still, I still don't know how I'll feel about the two-week break constantly between all the major content, because obviously there's a ton of stuff not in these patches. I'm notes. used to it. I'm used to it. I'm just thinking it's going to be so busy for so many weeks. So many weeks, Sly. So many weeks. I'm withering away because of how busy it's gonna be. He's right. It is gonna be busy. All right. I don't know how to get back up from this. I've kind of put myself in a weird, like reverse crab situation right now on the chair. Dude, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Need me to I'm gonna slide out like this. All right. I'm gonna bring it back. I'm gonna sit on the floor and then I'm just gonna stand. All right. There you go. There I go. You did it. You did it, Happy. You did it. That was kind of weird. That was a little bit it weird. Was. It was. If only you could have seen under my desk where I was entirely located. All right. I don't think I want to. It's like I said, just a reverse crab. Don't worry. That's in like a. That's they, they throw that. They do that in like P90X and shit, right? All right, so is there anything else you want to you wanna hit on as a topic, Sly? Any other comments you want to mm -hmm. add about this patch, about your expectations for Tuesday? I, I'm honestly optimistic for this, for this patch. Um, as far as like a few things, I have no expectations. I'm going to hold my judgment until, until I actually get through them and see what, what happens, but... Yeah, I think I think it's a solid patch. It's one. Will it? I don't think it'll top four point two. Now, when you say no. you don't think it'll top four point two, do you, are you throwing in Pagos, Hildebrand, um, Heaven on High, and Ultimate? Or are you just talking about four point three as its initial implementation? Initial implementation. Okay, then I then I'd agree only because there's no raid tier, and that's kind of my yeah. primary. It's it's a pretty biased yeah. thing for me to say, but I would agree. I just need them to deliver on the story. This is supposed to be the big patch story wise. You know, yeah. we still never expect the twenty four mans to be as big as they're saying this one's going to be. And mm -hmm. four lords is something that you know I've been looking forward to, and I'm curious about the swallows compass, about its involvement with geomancy. You know what the plan is there. And the name of the quest was a tortoise in time, and that makes me really happy because I love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So there's a lot of things I'm looking forward to here. So I just, as long yeah, as the story, name. the story right in 4.3 is they nail it, I'll be good with the wait and doing things like Dauntless and Bless and whatever not's releasing within those two week periods. Don't look at me. <laughs> Why? Hey guys, Dauntless open bait is next week too. <laughs> With some more updates. New stuff. And Detroit Detroit comes out on, on Friday. Oh, God, I forgot about Detroit. Oh, yeah. boy, yeah, now you fucked. Yeah, you fucked. You done deaded. You done dead dead. Good luck, Sly. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. There you go. All right, well, on that note, I think we can thank the sponsors, and then we can uh, be on our many ways, Sly. Especially because I'm starting to lose my voice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it might be time to wrap it up and, you know, get your voice back and eat well, food. Well, yeah, oh, food is a definite one. All right, well, thank you, everyone, for joining us this week for episode 165 of State of the Realm. Before we sign off, we want to thank our weekly sponsors. First of all, thanks to Steel Series Again, remember, check the YouTube videos for that giveaway. If you didn't, if you miss it at the top of the show, every month, Steel Series wants us to do a giveaway on State of the Realm. They want to sponsor this show. Uh, they've been a sponsor to my personal channel. For quite some time now and the fact that they're just giving away one free item per show is pretty good for all the rules and what it is that's actually a prize go check the youtube videos there should be a link under there for a gleam.io and you can enter with that link and that'll be present for every week we'll do one drawing a month and then throw a different giveaway 
under the YouTube videos. We, of course, have to thank our Patreon sponsors. And, of course, first up, we have our patron of light who uh, threw his FC name into, into the hat as well. That's a screenshot they gave to us. This is one of our top supporters, Kucha Cross and the Advent Free Company on Genova. It's their own personal FC. Hey. So they just wanted to make sure to encompass the entire free company. So thank you for your support. As for always, and uh, some some high quality screenshots. Last week you had the wings. I I forgive you because the, the dress looks good, but the the wings just just no bueno. This one this one you're looking you're looking a little bit more ready to uh to kill some shit. And Inclu- as the chat says, that glamour is dope. There you go. Far more compliments this week. We have the rest of our sponsors as well. We have our standard sponsors: Asuka Wake of Genova. Uh, Lamilia Nella of Midgard Sormer, Sarah and the Avalanche family on Malboro, Johnny Woden of Tomberry, Nyark of Clan Vizsla, Kifka and the Great Eagles on Exodus, Dark Graver, Kat Ayoshi from Kujata, Ski of Symphonia from Ragnarok, Ross Effin from Exodus, Brian Lander from Westhouse, the Purple Warrior, Andrew Red Steel on Exodus, Lexi Valentine, Mantar and the Revivus FC from Zodiac, Sour Cuban Tribes from Genova, Renoa Chikara, Goisha Valfer, Hirsch Bursh Fairy, Phoenix Down FC on Goblin, and Saren from Zodiac. We have our elite sponsors as well. We have Det we have Det Neko, we have Diablo, Holy Tabasco, Red Thorn and Sarah, Kern Ioni. Askin Hawk from Shiva, Oscar, Crash 015, Mustangs, Serenity FC on Ultras, Cat Kazuma, Serial Kier and the Reckless Tea Party on Cactar, Ignis Faircon from Diablos, Blesher of Fanfret, Not Quarters from Excalibur, uh, Krovos, Moon, Krovos Moonscar, Private Mikey, Spike, Nadine Kirasami, Rudy Rudiger, Tin Colossus, Killer Hackman, Raw Jr., Mill Gaming, and Killtastic Jones. Hey! Thank you, everyone. Thank you all so much for supporting the show. Now, with and that. Supporting hashtag demonetized. Hashtag, I mean, I don't support it, it's combating it combating it supporting us through it through it there you, there you go. go all right well with that sly i think you can say goodbye to everyone for the week until next week here so do it you got it oh goodbye <laughs> all right and that's all you need to hear from him all right sly, <laughs> tell them where they can find you at uh you can find me at twitch.tv slash sly aka gray fox slash Sly aka Gray Fox, excuse me. Um, Twitter slash Sly the Fox, Instagram at Sly aka Gray Fox 07, YouTube.com slash the Velvet Room, where I'm actually getting off my ass and putting my playthrough of Strange Journey Redux on as I do it. So um, I'll probably put today's up. And yeah, we're still playing Strange Journey Redux. Shin Megami Tensei Saturday tomorrow, where we're just doing the same thing we did all week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Happy. Where can they find you? I don't know. I, just want, I really wanted to do that face because my beard is so long, and I just was looking at it. And I'm like, oh, get rid of it. Like, trim this. Ah, look at it. It's just too much. Just there's too much going on here at this point. Too much for me. Can't even sleep on it anymore. You can find me, Mr. Happy1227, at Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all at Mr. Happy1227. Over on the YouTube side of things, we've had a few uh, bits of news. We've had a lot of Final Fantasy XIV stuff as of late. We have Dauntless stuff that's going to be starting up next week after we've gotten through our 4.3 guides and everything. Of course, we'll be doing guides for Extreme Mode. We'll be doing guides for the Dungeon. We'll be doing guides for not Ultimate. I'm not going to do a guide for Ultimate. I think that there's not really... The people who need guides for Ultimate probably don't need... They probably just need to see the video with like a text guide and less have someone make an actual guide. It's more of a curiosity thing. So I probably won't do a dedicated guide, but a discussion about it. Um, I'd like to do one with Layla or I'd just like to do one that's like the one that Layla does after I clear through that. And of course, I'll be posting each of the phases as I kill them. So uh, be on the lookout for lots of kill videos. Spoiler free on YouTube. Don't worry about that. There won't be the name of the trial at all. I'll just be like patch 4.3 main scenario. It's fucking Tsukiyomi. Yeah, I'll make that the title. <laughs> I'm sure that'll upset nobody, Sly. That's it. I'm sure that that will that will, that will not upset We've anybody. said it for like two weeks. Why the fuck would you not believe it? Sly, when we log in, people are going to be saying, okay, so what's new this patch? We've already been over this. There's no, yeah. there's no escaping this. I'm still going to be watching all the cutscenes on Tuesday, though. That's fucking yeah, happening. Of course. Of course. That's fucking happening. All right. So I'm I'm doing that. That has to happen. I just want some dope ass music this Tuesday as well. Anyway, on that note, I think it's time for us to go into a very short post show. Get some food. Get some bevs. I'm going to have a beer, I think. 
Somebody, hey. somebody, somebody uh, brought a bunch of Coronas over for Cinco de Mayo a couple weeks ago. Why? Because they didn't know that Mel's margaritas are like the most potent margaritas you've ever had in your fucking life. They're a, a one. They're a, a three to one ratio, which is right. Where's three shots of tequila per two shots of lime or whatever, of, or two shots of lime juice per one shot of like lime liqueur. I don't know, something like that. It's a, it's a ratio, but basically there's three shots of tequila in pretty much everyone's glass. So he got fucked up. And then I made him try the, the alcohol that one of my friends sent me, Martin, which is like 164 proof or some shit. So he, uh, he, did, he didn't have a good day the next day. So he left all the Coronas in the fridge. <laughs> and I got limes. So I'm, we're good. Hmm. So I think I'm going to have one of those and, uh, and chill for the rest of the evening. So Sly... Let's move on over into post show next week, ladies and gentlemen. First thoughts on the patch. That's the plan, and I think we'll do spoiler cast the week following because of uh, yeah, you know, we don't care about waiting two weeks no. anymore. We can't no. because ultimate comes out, and then we have to wait three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. Who even knows at that point? So uh, exactly, we've got all our shows planned out for a while. Again, next Friday. Next Friday. Next Friday. Next Friday. Next Friday. 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 Next Friday. 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 Not Wednesday. Not Tuesday. Not Monday. Mm -mm. Not Thursday. But Friday. Friday. All right, let's go on into post show. Thank you everyone for watching this week. We'll see you next time on the YouTube side. Sorry if it cuts into the post show for a few seconds, but it's going to happen. So bye. See you next week. Oh, we should have sang Friday.